And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. We have one, two, three, four, five good brothers. Ah, ah, ah. We have the un the unblinking the unblinking eye of comic books, good brother Doku, the flamboyant fly, good brother Flutter, the man who is who is in who is eternally laughing at the <laughs> at the least for the last fifty years, good brother yeah. Matty. We have we have the we have the man who is the who <laughs> with a man with the shades, the man who can wear sunglasses unlike Cyclops and not be a dick. <laughs> and we have, and we have the CEO of Zadari Enterprises. Let's get into this shit. <laughs> we were supposed to do this thing last week. Unfortunately, technical difficulties marred the whole experience. And because and because of that, we're doing we're doing things this we're doing things this week. This is what I'm calling the Pick Five Challenge. So. I have um I've seen various YouTubers do do um things like how to how to adapt various characters in anime or or live action or what have you into D and D and I'm and I'm like you're doing it wrong, especially you who keeps who thought that adapting JoJo into D and D was a good idea. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Why would you do that? Okay, okay, that wrong. Let let me let me let me be a little more clear. If you're dealing with just phantom blood and battle tendency, maybe you can make it work. As a monk, as as monks versus vampires, maybe. Mm. If that. By the way, for you guys in the call, uh, I put the uh, splash screen on the cat in the council so you can see what we've got. Look at what we're looking at today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've I've kind of I've kind of dabbled with this in the past with the characters with character series that I've done, but um. We're going whole hog with this. So, here's how here's how it's gone. I asked ev I asked every member of the monastery to pick five anime, and I w and I would try and pick one of the games in my massive, 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 massive library, and figure out what would be a good fit for a TRPG based based around that particular anime. Now I do want to make clear, even though there are anime TRPGs, I am not limiting myself to just that. It wouldn't be fair to do that, and it would violate my policies. Now that being said, that being said, there are a few there are a few rules that I asked everybody to follow. And if I open this up to the to everybody else as a as a sem as a semi regular series, these rules will apply to them as well. One. This is the obvious one, but I just need to get it out of the way. Don't assume that you need to go with fantasy series, otherwise I'd have to kick your ass. Um, I think we're pretty safe there, looking at the document you haven't seen. Yeah. Yes. It's e it's either that, or I'd or I'd fly you over to fly you over to Japan and say and say you have you have to go you have to go thirty minutes with the murder grandpa. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um. Yeah, I could do it. Get him drunk enough. <laughs> and they got worse. Yeah, yeah that... fuck with that dude. <laughs> Moving on. Not fuck around. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Um. Second is what is what I'm calling the double up rule. You can you cannot have more than two of the same genre, or written by or written by the same creator. I'm not I'm not applying created by the same studio because that would cause more problems than it would solve. Obviously, because yeah. like for instance, if you were bar if that meant you were barred from doing a, a bunch of madhouse works, well, that's going to close a lot more doors than it's worth. Yeah. Now, just for some clarification for the people who will eventually watch this, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, genre is a very broad term, especially considering that things that could be considered the same genre are really not the same genre when you watch them. For example, there are innumerable isekai under the sun, but not all isekai are created equal. Well, that's cer well, that's certainly true. 
The reason why I imposed this double up rule was to encourage variety. Mm -hmm. Basically, the general idea is don't pick two enemy that are that similar to each other. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. <laughs> Which um, I will I will admit that I will admit that when I wrote that rule, it was with the assumption that I would eventually open this little project up. And there are certain people within within our holy temple who might have a bit of a might have a bit more difficulty in stick in in venturing away from their gimmicks. Cure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm actually gonna give Cure the benefit of the doubt because his taste in enemy is a lot further than that. Yes, his preference is magical girls, but uh, he's picked some stuff for the what for our watch party that goes well beyond that, and he's picked some winners. So. His taste is a lot more than the refined than you think, or a lot more uh, broad than you think. Are you talking about preference or fetish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aren't they kind of the same thing when, it, when we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give him, I'm trying to of, give him credit, fetish. guys. Come on. Yeah, but you know how it is. Once once we raise you up a little, we got to knock you back down. It's all about balance. <laughs> well, Jared, for what it's worth, I tried. <laughs> Look, you know you knew exactly what you were getting into. <laughs> so, like we did like we did with the world building experiment, we're going to start at the top. So, Doku, you you're at you got first crack on your on your 5. So, let me um let me open up the books and let's see and let's see what you've got. So, what do you got for slot number 1, Doku? All right, first question real quick. Do you want me to tell you the show first or do you want me to do the pitch first? Give me the show name, then you give me the elevator pitch. And for the record, for anybody who might sub who might submit um, f five later on, um, if you do not put an elevator pitch in what you submit, it doesn't count. I will remove I will remove those entries with prejudice. <laughs> All right then. Now that that's clarified, uh, first show, the one you already know is coming, Outlaw Star, obviously. Okay. Elevator. Elevator pitch. You can play it with two players, but it's better three or more. You're a misfit crew. You have a ship. You can hunt pirates. You can be hunted by pirates. You can hunt for treasure. Sometimes the treasure hunts you. And you also still have to pay the bills. Okay. Now, with now for this one, now I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm not going to do all five at once for each of you guys because um, that that'd be um, information overload. Yeah. So. For Outlaw Star, I'd say one. I'd say one of the more obvious picks I could go with is a uh, game called Bounty Head Bebop, especially <laughs> since that does have a a bit of a rule set for what it refers to as feng shui magic. But for all intents and purposes, it's the Dao magic from the series. It's just that they can't actually call it that. Um, I do think that what's going that what's going to the on the ground parts of Outlaw Star are going to be easy to adapt. Um, I'd say the part that's going that's going to be tricky is space combat, especially when it comes to the notion of grappler arms. And for this reason, I would actively discourage using map based space combat for this. Purely theater of the mind. Yes. Simply because of the fact that you're dealing with um, ships that are moving, that, that are moving with a lot of hardware, a lot of fast. The a lot a lot of times when space combat is used in RPGs, it's used in a more traditional sense. You know, big ass ships with a lot of big ass guns, a very slow maneuvering, and thus pre and thus pre planning your movement patterns is paramount. So, Battlefleet Gothic. Mm, no. Even, well, I'd I'd say I'd say that something like Battlefleet Gothic would be a terrible fit for this, especially since you're only going to be dealing with one ship. Um, oh no, I was saying uh, how uh, space combat is treated on a lot of tabletop RPGs. Yeah. Not no. Don't use Battlefleet Gothic for this. That would be terrible. No, I I was tempted to use Rogue Trader, but <laughs> there. But um, that's going to have too much baggage. Um, the other possibility if somebody wants to really, really get crunchy is Traveler. Did you lose Monk already? Oh, God. No. Uh, nope, nope, nope. There no, we no. go. You're good. You're good. Um, 
If you really want to get crunchy with it, you could use Traveler, but that's a at-your-own-risk thing. I.e., if you do that and you complain that it ends up being too crunchy, don't come crying to me. <laughs> you made the choice. <laughs> you made your bed, now get fucked in it. <laughs> Look, I got nothing. I got nothing against Traveler, but Traveler is leaning far more in the. Even though it calls itself a space opera RPG, and it has since the '80s, Traveler leans more into Trek style. Mm. Mm. So, not exactly a good fit when you've got a when you've got a bunch of ex Macross people working <laughs> working on that particular anime. Um. I lost it a long time ago, but I do remember somebody trying to stat out as many caster shells as they could. Um, and I, th I think they had like 50 different variety varieties. Which is funny, considering that there aren't even that many varieties in the actual lore. Yeah, I think he was, I think he was trying to play freeform with it. The only thing is, I wouldn't recommend, even if I could find that document, I wouldn't recommend anybody using it because it used the Palladium system. Oh, oh <laughs> nope. Wait a minute, we're playing rifts now. When did we start playing rifts? <laughs> I ain't do. I ain't doing that. Savage worlds Nobody... rifts, maybe. And incidentally, nope. set incident. Now, incidentally, I should I should note before we go on that there are a couple rules I set for myself. Um, the obvious one: I'm not using D and D for any for any of my answers. The second part. The second part, of course, is um, I'm not using any universal style games and this includes universal anime games so no big eyes small mouth or um he or hero system or gurps because if i and the same goes with savage worlds because if i use those i could just use those for every pick kind of yes, purpose. challenge mm -hmm. for um, everyone involved so with that said yes. doku what's what's behind door number two <clears throat> Anyway. Uh, Doku. You know, that's something I forgot in my elevator pitch. I completely neglected the idea of uh, caster guns. Magic, magical guns, mm -hmm. guns that shoot magic, you know? Yeah. That's always fun. Oh, yeah. That would have been a good hook, too. <sighs> I fail. Hey, Still first Still late and gay, as always. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's a curse at this point in time. Anyway. <laughs> So, what's behind door number two, Doku? Uh, door number two. Corpse party. Ooh. Ha! Ooh. Okay. Like Lay it on me. All right. Well, it's kind of like a murder mystery, except you have to get uh, yourself not get murdered. Uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, you do a ritual, you find yourself in a, uh, an alternate space. Maybe some other players are with you. Maybe they're not. Uh, solve the mystery. Get out alive. There you go. Straightforward. Okay then. So for this one, we're pro we're probably going to need something that can be a little bit mis a little bit mystery and a little bit horror, but not um, not too dark with the horror. Kind of um, carnival style horror. Um, you know. Well, around he around here, the around around here, there's um va there's Valley Scare where they turn where they turn Valley Fair into horror themed for Halloween. Um, Jay's, I I think that there's something similar in Florida. I just can't think of what the name is. I think one uh, of the theme parks gets turned into gets turned into a bit more horror themed. Oh, that's like almost all the theme parks, really. The <laughs> Halloween Horror Nights being the big, probably the biggest one of them. Yeah. I knew that there was. I knew that there was one that an, that an old friend of mine tried to talk me into go, into going to, but I just couldn't at the time. Um, and of course, there's the every every place in every place in the Midwest has their has the whole hay bale hay, the old hay bale ride from hell kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for that, I'd probably go with chill. Chills horror has has a lot more in common with um with the Buffy verse and with Universal monsters than it does with anything else. I mean, for God's sakes, first edition Chill had it had a module featuring Elvira. <laughs> I think I think its particular tone of horror is pretty established by that point. Because from what I understand with Corpse Party and the way you describe it, it's not it's um it's a little bit kitsch. 
And a bit, yeah. I mean, it's we're going off the anime because the games are a completely different animal. And oh, yeah. the the whole thing is uh, trying to trying to get out of the uh, alternate space alive. So that's that's primary goal number one. But again, it's you're not not every single person's in the same uh, same space. So you could walk past somebody and you know like smell their perfume or something like that, but they're not actually there. So getting out is more the the trickier part. That that would present an that would present an interesting appro approach when it comes to a table, and in or and in order to do that, if I was doing this at a physical table, I would probably have everybody have their own little screens where they where um where they could where they couldn't pa they couldn't pass notes between each other or look at each other's character sheets. They'd just have to guess. And this is actually something that I think would work really well in something like a Discord call because you could obviously have it that only one, that only one person can speak at a time. Well, and the other thing with the uh, corpse party, if we're just going by the uh, the mini series, the ending presents you with an opportunity to be an absolute dick if you're the one running the game, because uh, apparently you're not supposed to lose your particular piece of the uh, the paper doll charm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what you could call the main character. Uh, he uses somebody else's piece, and so you have to hold hands, do the Sachiko Forever charm, uh, and they end up back in the school, and the two girls on either side of him are holding the hands and the arm, and that's it. His body is just gone. It's just two bloody arms where he should be. So we don't even... I guess you can't use somebody else's piece, would be the implication. Mm -hmm. um, well, every... No matter how much somebody wants to deny it, every GM has a bit of dickishness in them. <laughs> we should know. Mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> it is indeed true. Yeah. So. There's, a, there's a reason that some of us have box versions of paranoia in our closet. <laughs> Look, just because, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean you're, doesn't mean you're wrong. My favorite quote by Spider Jerusalem from the comic book series Transmetropolitan, a paranoid is just someone who has all the facts. Um, <laughs> when it comes to TTRPG, it's very accurate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so what's behind door number three? Door number three would be the Legend of Arslan. Ooh. Ooh. We're, go we're, going we're going classy up in this bitch. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> So, Legend of Arslan, uh, you're either protecting or you serve the heir to the kingdom, or you could play as the heir to the kingdom if you really want to take on that burden. Uh, there was a coup. You're thrown out. You have to uh, convince other people to support you, retake your rightful place on the throne. Or you could play as the person trying to help the rightful heir to the throne retake his rightful place on the throne. You could be an advisor, bodyguard, military commander. Hell, you could be a common foot soldier if you really wanted to. Now, this one, uh, this one, I am, I am slight, I am slightly familiar with, um, both, for, both from the fact that it, that Arslan has been adapted several times. The most recent version um, being done by the same animation team that did Full Metal Alchemist, and there was also the fact that it had a pretty decent Musou game um, at one point. And for me, the given the fact that um, its partic its particular approach is very um, is very thousand and one nights, I guess I'll say. Yeah, that's fair. I would go with Capharnum Tales of the Dragon Marked, which is a very in is a very interesting approach, and it's. A game that I hopefully will be able to um, will be able to review one of these days because I've seen a lot of people c claim that it claim that its dice system is too complicated. It's really not. It's just it's just that if you're if you're approaching it from this from a straight perspective on how dice works, it's um it's not it's not going to it's not going to help you since let me. See. Let me um look. Let me grab that one. Okay, dragon marked. Give give this a second because I gotta go through search engine hell. 
<laughs> oh, it happens. I am literally looking through my my PDF collection as we do this. <laughs> and you guys, you guys have seen the list, and that list that I've shown you in the past is a bit um, outdated. Yep, you've got new additions coming in all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to the wonderful world of an ever-evolving hobby. Yep. I know. So, you can pick somewhere to uh, start, you just, just have to do so knowing there is no finish line. Yeah. You start, but you never stop. Well, I wouldn't... I would make the, I would make the joke about the about the hotel about Hotel California, but you get the arrest. <laughs> now, the th the thing about um about the way about the way that the die type works is it is a horizontal and vertical die type. Um, you know how, and this is the reason why, this is the reason why, why I said that looking at, looking at it from the traditional approach that you might see from say D20 is not going to do you any favors. I do remember that. Because first off you're, um, you're rolling six siders, so you might have a bit, you might have a bit of an easier time if you've got a shatter on background. Um, so you roll, you, you roll your attributes, you roll your attributes, attribute and, um, skills worth of D6s. Um, any die that are rolled equal to, equal to the attribute, any die that, a number of die that rolled equal to the attributes, so your attributes worth, are at, are added together to get a result. You also have one die that's set aside called the dragon die. Which is an exploding die, i.e., roll a six, roll it, roll it again, and add, and add the last result, and keep going until you stop rolling six. Um, this is compared to difficulty, and the die, but the die that are not used to obtain the result determine the magnitude of success or failure. And for and for these, um, it's all about it's all about rolling well in groups. So. You can't. So because of that, there are rules to skew it so to skew it where you where you'd be able to roll less attribute die, but you you've got a better chance of getting a higher degree of success. So you've got a bit of an interesting risk reward thing. Like I said, it's it's not. I wouldn't say it's overly complicated, but it is it is one where you're gonna have to, where um where you're gonna have to think through about how about how you're gonna do that die roll like. Do you do you want to lower your chance of success at the chance of getting a better degree of success? Because just meeting the difficulty is the equivalent of a marginal success. Um, now some of the setting stuff in Kafarnum might take some finagling, especially since, unless I'm mistaken, Arslan is a fairly low fantasy setting. Uh, yeah, it's actually. It actually doesn't really come across as being fantasy since it sticks pretty heavily in the realm of uh, realism. Mm -hmm. I would argue it's more, it'd be fair to say it's more historical fiction than it would be actual fantasy. Yeah. Like fantasy would be a uh, Lotus War or Goblin Slayer. Mm -hmm. um, or even, uh, what's the Valkyrie and Bowman, I think is another one. Yeah. Um Now, if I, now if I can't, you if I can't use Kafarnum, um, another one that I could easily see getting used is um, blood and bronze, which is a little it is a little bit more Sumerian, but I think I think it's something that can work. I think it's something that can work. Um, but yeah, that's that's the approach that I see that I see with I see with that. Either either way, you've got some good options. It's just that for whatever reason. RPGs, RPGs set in the uh, Middle East. There's, um, there's not as many independent ones, as opposed to well, there's a fair amount that are um, with it, that are within their own particular genres. Um, and I'll be honest, that was something I considered because I really wanted to do Vinland Saga, but nah. Um, 
Well, there's already a fair amount of there's already a fair amount of um, Viking themed RPGs, so Vinland Saga wouldn't be as much of a deal breaker as you'd think. Well, it's more so I wanted to give you a better challenge, and I figured Arslan would be a uh, something you wouldn't see coming. All right, <laughs> All right. Fair, fair enough. Um, so what's what's what do you got next? Well, as much as I wanted to be a dick and pick Lucky Star just to see what you would do with it, I decided against it. <laughs> <laughs> so, since we're on the uh, theme of uh, being dethroned from your kingdom, I went with uh, Devil as a Part-Timer. Ooh! Good boy! Okay, Devil is a Part-Timer. Strong boys. <laughs> Devil is a Part-Timer. All right. I art, I already have an idea of what we're de- of what we're dealing with, um, but give me the elevator pitch just for the sake of the audience. All right, the elevator pitch is: you're either the demon king and you're in service, to, or you're in service to the demon king. You don't necessarily have to play as him, but uh, the demon king has been dethroned, and you have to flee through a uh, through a magical portal that puts you in the fantastical world of Tokyo. <laughs> and you either have to support the devil in his uh, endeavors, trying to find his way back to defeat the hero and retake his uh, throne, or if you so choose, you could play as the Demon King himself, and your job is to make sure to pay the bills. Yep. It's your castle. You gotta pay for it. Um, okay. <laughs> so with... So- with um, so- with something like this, I think we I think we need to go for a li- a a little bit more a little bit more of a a little bit more of a humorous approach. Um, one that was a twenty four hour RPG that that might work is Wandering Monsters High School. Um, another one I could another one I could see I could um see I could see working is um is M- is MSF high even though that one might be range- reaching a little bit too close to uni- to a universal approach um beyond the beyond those i'd say i'd say obviously we're le- we're leaning towards um conte- um contemporary fantasy to to some degree um I, w- I would pro- I'd pro- the one that I the one that I keep coming back the one that I keep coming back to in the in this in this particular um regard is uh, is um wa- is wandering monsters high school because a lot of the other a lot of the other ones I'm thinking of might take themselves a little bit too seriously and um devil is a part timer isn't while I think it has its, I think it can potentially have its serious moments. It's not going to be that serious. I should know. I've reviewed that anime. Mm-hmm. It has one or two moments that could be considered serious, but it's even the not serious much. moments, even the serious moments, lead into something comedic. So I'd... exactly, yeah. Um, if I have to, uh, let me look at my look at my light novel collection. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Whereas the other, the other one that could potentially work, even though it might, it might take a bit, it might take a bit of um, wiggling, is grim. Um, simply because of the simply because of the fact that that one doesn't take doesn't take itself too too um, seriously. The um, the main th- the main thing is 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 that I'd probably do if I was running this kind of thing is I would I would keep the um, I would keep anybody's attempt at doing power fantasy with this on a very short leash. Oh, you would have to. That's why. That's why in the elevator pitch, I immediately said, "If you uh, want to play as the devil, your job is to pay the bills." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. I mean, in the actual source material, he doesn't really use his powers too often. So. No, it's only in extreme cases, and even then, it tends to not be for what you're planning. Exactly. Right. I think uh, I don't know if it's true to the source material, but I know in the anime the uh, the hero recognizes him as being the devil and confirms it because he uses magic to fix the fry machine. Yep. Huh? Yep. I, it, it's stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'll admit, I actually 
I made the joke about Lucky Star, but I was really debating put a uh, putting uh, Rosario plus Vampire in this slot. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and forth. I'm just gonna put this out here, out here, out there right now. When it comes to Rosa when it comes to Rosario to Vampire, skip the anime, read the manga. The manga is a whole lot better. As someone who's seen the first season of the anime, it is terrible. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> as as someone who has done both. While, yes, the manga is better, just remember that this is kind of a, a, a moe trash sort of thing to begin with, so... Oh, most yeah. definitely. I know that, it's just that the the manga doesn't didn't limit itself to just that. It actually decided to expand. Yeah, but, I mean, the core, the core premise was still mostly moe trash. Let's, let's be honest here! <laughs> I've, I've, been, yeah. I've been smart to avoid that one, thankfully. Um... And the now, when it comes to now, um, so I'd I'd say that's four so far. So what's the last one you got? Uh, as much as I wanted to put uh, HX arrows into this, the series <laughs> isn't. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> that's not. It's not PG thirteen. I still love that show. It's so stupid. But the series, it's not done premiering, so I decided I wouldn't. Uh, instead, I went with Blue Gender. Ooh. I mean, if you There's... wanted to go with something as as dumb as uh, as HX Eros, you could have done uh, Franks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, nice. Got him. But Blue oh. Gender's a good pick. Yeah, I figured Blue Gender would be a good one. I didn't have us. I figured it was a good mix of sci-fi horror. Yeah. So um, now, putting aside the fact that um. There's a. I have a bit of a story. I have a bit of a history when it comes to blue gender because I used oh, that oh, to get. Uh oh, a do we lose Monk? Thank you. Oh, no, give it a minute. Give him a minute. He, he tends to cut out for a little bit and come back. Um. Yeah. He's in I the have a bit of a history with blue party. gender. <laughs> <laughs> those those poor children. They'd lose so bad. <laughs> oh God damn. <laughs> God, I just keep I just keep thinking of the freaking uh the scissor scene from Corpse Party. Like, oh, oh if you're a GM with a sadistic streak, that that would be one hell of a that'd be one hell of a game to play as a uh, as a storyteller. Not even necessarily refing the game, but just here's my notes. Go go give people nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but I mean oh 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 Xana, fuck you. <laughs> We see you like oh, there we go. Okay, that was weird. Um, I have a bit of a history with blue gender because a friend of mine was a big fan of um, Starship Troopers, and I used that to uh, weasel my way into making him an anime fan. Nice. <laughs> mm, good. Um, good choice. Although, although that was that was after I had I had beaten it into him to um, read the book because. As much as I like the Starship Troopers movie, um, the book is better. The book is way better, and it's also completely different. Like, yeah, for yeah, for the uh, what it tries to tackle. The book, the book is much much better at tackling what it's tackling because <laughs> they just decided to take the very surface level stuff and turn it into an entertaining movie, which was not a bad choice. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. It was a good choice to make it an entertaining movie. Yeah. And I got I got no lie. beef with, I got no beef with it, <laughs> and um, I'm um, cautiously optimistic about the upcoming game adaptation. Um, even though even though I'd much even though I'd much rather instead instead of instead of doing a Starship Troopers version of They Are Billions, which is a good game by the way, I'd I'd rather I'd rather actually be in the it be behind behind the gear of 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 the um arm of the um um armored infantry. Mm -hmm. no, I don't blame you. Yeah, especially oh. if we're going off the book where you can have the uh, the exoskeletons instead of that crap ass armor that they use in the movie. Yeah. Um. So for something like this, obviously we're dealing with we're dealing with a mech series, but um, not all mechs created equal. 
So that that throws out a few that throws out a few that that could potentially be used. Um, and given the fact that we're dealing with um, the mech in blue gender is um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'd say it's like into a vertical tank. In this, in oh. the sense that we're not dealing with the most, mo we're dealing with fairly mobile types of mechs, but we're not dealing with full-on Gundam-style mechs. Uh, and and uh, one moment there, Monk. Before we get too too much further, we didn't get Doku's elevator pitch. All right. Oh, I okay. About yeah, that. Be great. <laughs> so <did I>. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I'm not gonna lie. I was debating. Using my elevator pitch is just, have you seen the movie Starship Troopers? All right. Instead of humans invading Clandathu, Clandathu invades Earth. There you go. <laughs> but I'm not going to be that. I'm not going to be that cheap. So, no, you play as a member of a, uh, uh, you play as a uh, member of a mech team. You're pilot. I mean, yes, you could be a mechanic if you want. I don't know why. But pilot and a mech team. Earth has been invaded by a uh, alien sectoid style, kill you, cocoon you, you know, bad shit, horrible stuff. Not your typical aliens. Uh, you have two two missions. One, save as much of humanity as possible. Two, eliminate the enemy. I guess three, don't get yourself killed, but optional. I mean, doesn't that come with saving humanity? Pretty much, you know, you give or take. Mm -hmm. um, and given the fact that the actual bug fights from what I saw in the anime um, aren't aren't exactly aren't exactly a pretty thing to deal with. Especially no, given no. how tough they are, to the point where you need to figure out where their core is in order to actually, in order to completely take it out. Well, and the other thing about those bugs is not only are they tough, which is part of the reason I went with Blue Gender and not some of the other mech series, because you have a better chance of actually dying than you actually do surviving an encounter with one, regardless of the mech. Mm -hmm. But they're also very good at figuring out where people are, to the point where there are several scenes where they'll break open the mech and rip you out. And then cocoon you. So when I said sci-fi horror, emphasis on horror. Now, taking that taking that into uh, taking that into account, um, the main one that uh, the there's a couple of, there's a couple that I'm con that I'm uh, con <laughs> that I'm considering. Um, the first the f the first one is um, remnants. Which is a which is a fairly is a fairly light approach, and is and does deal with a. Even though blue gender isn't is close to a post apocalypse, it's um it's clo it's close enough. It's a apocalypse adjacent since there's the whole division between people on Earth and people on Second Earth. Um. And the, and there's the fact that you're um that you ha that you have a very strict wound. Tr Wound um, track. I'd say I'd say that I'd say um, <clears throat> remnants would remnants would be one part one particular option that could be used. The uh, the other one that I could that I could see get that I could see getting used for this, and this is actually a um, TG created um, project is Chrome Strike. Um, <clears throat> the thing the thing that's the thing that's going to now, granted, Chrome Strike has a little more in common with Armored Core in terms of of Max by Max by Corpse, but um, I do th I do think it wouldn't be too it wouldn't be too difficult to um fin to finagle it into working. Um, the main now if um the main thing that I the main thing that I would try and emphasize is the fact that. Your is the fact that um, this is not going to be a game where you're going to be just chewing through. Where even at high levels, you're going to be just chewing through the bugs like paper. Um, like I'd pr I probably have it that just that dealing with just one bug is get is gonna be a uh, is gonna be enough to give somebody nom flashbacks. Um, that would actually be a bit more true to the series because if I remember correctly, in the first episode, they have like, I believe it's like two or three mech pilots versus one insect and the insect kills at least one of them i don't remember it's been a long time since i've seen it but they're they're not a joke the mechs are actually rather underpowered by comparison mm -hmm. 
then again, I don't exactly imagine that humanity up till this point was planning on technology to fight giant insectoid bugs from outer space. Yeah, the like, and to be honest, um, if he hasn't done it already, uh, wait a minute. I think he. I'm pretty sure Chuck has dipped his toe into um, blue gender at least at least on some form. Um, I can actually double check. Actually, I'm way ahead on that one. I'm not. I'm not seeing it. No, I guess he hasn't touched blue gender yet. I could have sworn he did. Wait, missed, ser missed series. No, nope. not either. He touched on he touched on the first first four episodes of of um of Trigon, but um and for some reason the history of Trunks, which I don't know why why the hell would you do that, Chuck? The history of Trunks. You know, he probably did it because nobody else has. I'm <laughs> guess, I'm guessing that. I'm guessing one of his patrons put him up to it. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's more likely. Um, Shades, do you remember the whole slipped under the door thing? Yeah. You know, where, so where somebody sent him an envelope with, ca with somebody supposedly sent him an envelope with cash, no return address, and it just said, review Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's evil and brilliant. I think... The way he, that's the way he tells it, but I think it's one of those cases where somebody asked him to review it, but they also asked him, don't mention my name, because otherwise people will know that I put you up to this. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I prefer, his, uh, I prefer his explanation of how things went down. It's more entertaining that way. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Now, with the... With, with, that, with that in mind, so that, that's, your, that's your five. Um, Flutter, you're up. Okay. So, Door number one. Yep. Devil May Cry. Okay. <laughs> I almost want to call that cheating. <laughs> it did get a twelve episode series, so oh, I'm well aware, but I'm st I want to call that cheating. <laughs> In technicalities, some they exist. <laughs> yeah, I, you I, are. Uh, you I are feel like I need mil correct the best kind of correct. I feel like I need um I feel like I need Mills Lane from Celebrity Deathmatch on this. <laughs> okay. So you're you're a new, you're like a, an amateur demon hunter and you're out around the city hunting and hunting random demons set forth by Sparta or Sid or who the hell ever and basically you you either get an assignment by Dante or run into Dante at one point and basically assist him with his demon huntings while also helping him pay his pay his pay his debt. That gets continuously that gets continuously higher. Okay. Dante sinks himself into debt real easy. Yes, he does. <clears throat> I'd say it's all. I'd say it's all. I'd say it's all the. I'd say it's all the pizza now. Um, putting aside the fact that I would love to have, I would love to, by some by some miracle, invite Reuben Langdon into the temple just to shit post. <laughs> <laughs> He'd do it. He would do it. He would. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll. Dr maybe one of us should drop him a line about about it. Although, um, I'm sure. You sh I'm pretty sure you guys would have a better sales pitch on that than I would. <laughs> yeah. I'd, just be um, like, I'd just be like Ruben people want you to be Dante in here just for a couple minutes <laughs> <laughs> he loves playing the character he is extremely happy DMC5 got me um, if I will I will note that um, that if that that if that if I bring him in I'm, pro I'm probably going to have to ask him about that about that role in a certain Metal Hero series Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll love to talk about it. We've we've asked him about it before. Yeah, <laughs> Mac Wendy. Yep. Um. Hey, sushi is delicious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. with with that said, I think I think for this one, I've ar I've already got a pretty obvious one. Now, 
I'd probably now when it comes to demon hunting, I'd probably ha- I'd probably have the demon hunters in question be on the same tier as um lady and in- lady instead of be- instead of um oh, yeah any of the people who have some have some sort of de- have some sort of demonic heritage. So no equivalent to Trish, definitely no equivalent to Dante, and um I wouldn't even ne- somebody like Nero would be borderline and um. <laughs> And of course, this of course at the power level of the sons of Sparta. No, <laughs> um, the obvious Remember? one I can think the obvious one I can think of would be um, Hunter the Vigil. Ooh, um, that one's a little bit more. That one's a, leans a little bit might lean a little bit too low. So if I can't go with if I can't go with that, then I'd probably go with. Um, Either Slayers or Eternal Legends. Those are a little. Those are a little bit more over the mm-hmm. top. Or actually, I take it back. The um, I'd say one of the best ones that I could go, that I could go with purely for doing crazy shit. Feng Shui. Oh God. Especially yeah, Feng. Sh- um, and I already I already have I already have some tips when it comes to creating custom archetypes for Feng Shui too. So. That that one I can easily work with. Um, I know some people might not like the whole yin yang die kind of thing, but um, it's not it's not that difficult. You you're basically you're basically calculating the difference between the two dies, and you and a critical is what happens if you get doubles. It's not that hard mm-hmm. to figure out, people. No. Um. Although I although I will note that um, in Dungeons the Dragoning there was an ent- there was an entire there was an entire um, martial tree dedicated just to um, being one giant Dante tribute. <laughs> However, if somebody ends up getting some version of the Lucifer, they have to do that line. And Xanatrix, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> oh God, you. Do you really want me to do the Lucifer line? <laughs> <laughs> Not the me... whole thing here, obviously, but you know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. I have to pull up the. I have to pull up the quote. Hold on. <laughs> no, I'm not saying. I'm not saying do it on the show. I know. I still have to pull it out though. <laughs> but just, just for the, because hey, in the end, we are all satisfied. Exactly, and you are set free. <laughs> like everybody, everybody complain. It's like people. I've seen people complain about about certain certain shows that are like having way too many dick jokes, and then and then um some and then somebody at Copcom decided to say, "Hold my beer." <laughs> I I just I'm gonna put it this way: some of the best lines in DMC four are anytime Dante's on screen. Ruben Langdon didn't just chew the scenery. He didn't just ham it up. That scenery has his teeth all over it. There's not a single inch of it that hasn't been eaten by him. Mm-hmm. It's just, I mean, but was that the price to pay for power? That Come whole on. thing was, ba- was, was basically playing. I, li- I like to describe that scene as um, Shakespeare versus Broadway. It's him just. It, gotta, I, I don't have words for how good Ruben Langdon is as a voice actor. <laughs> anytime you hear him play Dante, just remember that um, Nero is always dead weight. Um, I for, I forgot one. I forgot one other thing is when it comes to Ruben Langdon. Um, he he somehow managed to find a way to play da- to play Dante in the feudal era. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I even though we didn't get any line like put your guns on, which um is one of the is one of the greatest English lines of all time. Um, <laughs> I can't be the only one who referred who referred to Date's appearance in the in that particular anime as and game as Masamune Dante. Oh yeah. <laughs> His his horse is a motorbike. You have no argument. <laughs> and his motorbike is chainsaws. Your argument is now invalid. Mm-hmm. To the point where I 
I think I made th I think I made that into a meme once. Anyway, um, so what do you got for door number two? This should come as a surprise to absolutely no one. High school DXD. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Saw that coming. Now, you really did see that coming. <laughs> okay, so you're a new student at Kuo Academy who somehow finds out about the Occult Research Club and gets involved with Rias and all the other girls and basically has like, like normal days where they don't fight any fallen angels or anything. Thing and then there's those days where like batshit insane all angels invade the school and such. Okay. First off, with something like this, I'm um, I'm very I'm very hesitant in bringing in the actual cast from this particular series because I'm more focused on the setting itself. Ah, right. And. Given given the way that peerage works in that with the with the various titles and, and the like, um, I am I am I am likely to I'm likely to use something like Valor where I ha where I have a good amount of freedom to to make to make custom abilities. Valor is not necessarily a universal style game. But it is a very flexible system. Um, now, be beyond something beyond something like that, another another one that I could see using is um, Shonen Final Burst, Ooh. especially since that might make things a little bit easier, since it uses a playing card motif instead of using a die system. And if you want the details on how Shonen Final Burst works, just watch my review of that. We'll never receive those details because it was at that point that the monk fell from grace. <clears throat> um, uh, he's gonna keep having. He's gonna get pissed. Yes, he is, which is why we're doing the recording thing in, in the first place. Yeah, he saw this coming. You know, he was actually he was actually smart to make us not all pick the same genre because or limit us from doing uh, limiting us from doing that. Because I definitely would have just been a dick. Oh my goddess, HX Eros, High School DXD, uh, Darling in the Franks, and let's see. Uh, I don't know what I would do for number five, but I've, I'll find something. So you know how I said mine? I'm really good at improv. Um, my my list has been fluid up until right now. Hang on, folks. Okay, I, th I think I'm back now. At least I hope I am. Hang on a minute. And looks like I need to do a reboot. God fucking damn it. Hey. 
And we it's are back. 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 What I was saying hey. is that the la the last one I would have picked is um is shown in Final Burst. Um, I think that I think that one ha I think that one has a decent die system, so you don't have to go too much into nit and grit about it. Um, of course, if you want to, you certainly can. Um, there's a few others that I could potentially go with, but I'm saving those just in case. <laughs> That's always a good idea, considering how assholeish we're all being. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. Oh yes. Hey, Mildred said he wanted a challenge. He's just lucky that I didn't give him a uh, food wars. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's easy. We've had discussions about that. Trust me, there, Doku. <laughs> right, little, 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 uh, little side tangent here, but a while back, uh, we'd actually done something similar to this. Me and Monk, where I picked like ten anime, and he had to do he had to do this like, kind of thing, and I did put food wars on the list. And I believe I gave you a very appropriate reaction. <laughs> yeah, that was the one that gave you the most shit. <laughs> well, I, th right, I think fine. I think I made it clear. I think I made it clear when when you put that in that I will not run a food wars RPG. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about uh? How about cooking with the Valkyries or bread of life? <laughs> <laughs> Doku, <laughs> you should be praying to whatever god that you pray to that I don't live in the D.C. area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Bread of Life isn't that bad. Is it? <laughs> I think that's the reaction right there. <laughs> don't, don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Okay. What do you got next for me, Flutter? Okay. These two are going to make Shades happy. Door number three. Death Parade. All right, pitch. I love, I love Death Parade, and its opening is fire. Yes. So, Deckham and the um, previous owners of the bar have left and given you ownership, and it's up to you. So, to the player and the other, and the uh, it's up to the GM and the other players to decide what the death games are. For which customers? Okay. Mm. Ooh. I think you got to go in here, Flutter. This one might be a bit tricky, and the the pick that I'm going with might might be a bit odd. But I am go I'm going to go with Maid. I'm going to go with the Maid ah. RPG. Oh, I was wondering when you would pull out the Maid RPG. Um now that one might that one might sound a bit odd given the given the fact that that whole that that whole RPG was meant to be one giant parody of maid cafes <laughs> <laughs> but give it but given the fact that the G that in that one the in maid the GM is implied to be the master of that particular house and the players are their maids and or butlers um in this in this regard, it's it's one of those things that would be tricky to work with, but it cer it certainly can. And hell, a year not too long ago, I um. Yeah, Toku. <laughs> <God damn> <laughs> <laughs> he goes laughs at Nicobara. <laughs> God damn it, Toku. Um, uh, I Toku. My hope. My hope. When it comes to when it comes to when it comes to Death Parade, what you what it's really going to test is the ability for the GM to get creative because this is not going to be a encounter heavy game. This is probably going to be a puzzle heavy um, game, a very narrativist approach. And it's definitely it's definitely possible, but you are going to have your work cut out for you no matter what game you end up using. I just think made would be would be the best approach simply because of the fact that you can get away with a lot more crazy shit to the point where and I swear to god this is true in the random item creation they actually have a survive card. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Jesus. I swear I sw I I'm and the thing is that's in the that was in the actual core book. That wasn't in any anybody's um expansion just to be a dick wow 
God. This is where I have to remind everybody that Made RPG is technically the first um, Japanese tabletop game to get translated into English. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, still have no idea why its translator has me blocked, but oh well. Block list, maybe? Probably. No, lo- no loss for me because um, his blog isn't, and it's not like it's not like I can't buy his stuff, anyways. What's he? What's he gonna uh-huh. do? Bar- find and bar, find and bar my bank account. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that, so I think that's that's three from you. So what do you got for door number four? Three words. Let's get excited. Doctor oh, Stone. Doctor Stone. Okay, Dr. Stone. That's a good one. All right, so first, first off. Pitch. You're a group of kids living in a world that's, that's, that's overcome the petrification, and you're finding a way to adapt with those who have either survived it or know about it secondhand. And, yeah. Okay. Taking that into account, there are two that I'm thinking of going with. Um, the first w- was um, Grunting the Race for Fire, which is a very caveman approach. Um, that one, oh, that, that one, that one might be a bit of a stretch. Makes sense. Um, the other one that I'm thinking of going with is a heavily modified version of Kid World. Huh. Um, now, in Kid World, the main it was still a contemporary thing, but for some reason. Um, all the adults are blind. Okay. And be- just replace that with all of the adults are stoned, and now you have Doctor Stone. <laughs> <laughs> um. When it comes, although although um, I have to want. It would be really awkward if in if in if in um, Germany Doc, Dr. Stone is translated as Dr. Stein. Oh god damn it. That would be <laughs> No, I think it would be translated even even then as Dr. Stone because when they actually say that phrase in the anime or in the manga, it's English. And they say it in English. Compared oh, I, to the I, I know, I'm just trying to make a double reference here because one, you've got the old Dr. St- You've got my favorite mad scientist from uh, Soul Eater. Yep. <laughs> and the guy who is the master of chair combat. And yeah. two, it two, you have a you have the Dr. Stein song from Halloween. Yep. So mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I'd say I'd, I would go with Kid World. Kid World might I know some people might say, "Well, why why not just use kids on bikes?" Kids on bikes wouldn't fit. The only way, the only kind of people who who play kids on bikes are people who are fans of Stranger Things. And um, while I'm not jumping for joy at Stranger Things, uh, it's not the it's not the it's not the approach to doing surre- to doing surrealist approaches. Um, I think another <sighs> one that might that might work is um. And this is this is a really really big might. I'd have to I'd have to house rule the fuck out of it. Is Tales from the Loop? Hmm. You oh. know you're lucky that nobody wanted to be a real dick and give you a Steins Gate or Future Diary. Oh god! Oh god! Oh, god. <laughs> it's not that I can't do it. It's that it is that. It means I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go through some headaches in the process. <laughs> I almost gave you future diary for the record. <laughs> well, of course you would do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I haven't already thought about this. <laughs> of course it's you, Doug. I'd be shocked if you didn't. I mean, Mirai Nikki isn't isn't that isn't that bad to adapt? I think for adaptation it wouldn't be that bad. It's just you'd have to, you'd have to decide whether or not you want to include characters, uh, the actual cast, and have to deal with that character. Um, no, um, considering, fine, fine. considering the bigger that, problem that I would have is dealing with time travel. 
Uh, well, I mean, the time travel only really occurred because one person from one universe intruded into another universe, but that's neither here nor there. Why does yeah, everything taste Stein's like copper? The there. <laughs> <laughs> I think Steins Gate would be harder to adapt in that regard. That yes, one because really Steins Gate has hard time travel coded into it, yeah. Yeah, and in, in that case, um, well, first off, I, I well, want you to... Um, I want you to imagine trying to truncate its version of time travel to fit on a single page that I'd need to write for one of my primers. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck with that. Let's not do too, too deep in that because we still got a whole bunch of other thing, games to go through. But yeah. Science, mm -hmm. Gate, Science Gate can be its own episode of Geek Watch at this point. Okay. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's five from you, Flutter, isn't it? Or no, that's, that's four. four. He's on that's number four. five now. This will be his fifth when he says it. I am the bone of my sword. Oh, you... I knew you were going to go with something that cringy. Fate! <laughs> oh, someone had to do the fate. Someone had to yeah. do the fate. And of course, you are, you are a master command, commanding a servant. It could, it could be one of the seven. Rider, Saber, Lancer, Assassin, Caster, or Archer. And you're competing in one of the many Holy Grail Wars. You know, to you know, to be honest, I probably end up bending the rules when it comes to how when it comes to how the how the Holy Grail wars work. Simply to simply to have it so that players aren't so adversarial to each other. Also, I'd need to find a way to work around the possibility of having some of having somebody potentially using two character sheets at once. Oh, to to play as the master and the servant. Mm hmm. Now, well, I mean, that's just, it. That almost seems like working with any sort of familiar animal companion in almost any RPG. So, mm, not uh, it's um. <sighs> I mean, it's not exactly the same because they're clearly people rather than you know. I'm not sure. Does berserk does um does berserker count as people? Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> Uh, even though the spirit of being berserk makes him mindless, he is still a person. Just um, don't send him into town to buy batteries. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you sure uh, you don't need to charge your batteries that you have by crushing them? <laughs> if I squeeze them hard enough, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, release more energy, obviously. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> poor Lancer in that series. He keeps dying. I know, right? He always dies. Well, well it depends on which version of Lance you're talking about. But yes, Kukulen almost always dies in every appearance he comes into. Well, I'm mostly referring to Carnival Phantasm with that gag. <laughs> oh, yeah! Yeah, where he's made the Kenny of the universe. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. That is literally his purpose in Carnival just, Phantasm. Just remember, there's a Lancer version of Lancelot. Yeah. Yeah. Um now with now taking taking that into account what you would what I would probably end up doing is instead of I would not be using the Holy Grail war itself but I'd probably be going a little more open. Now first <laughs> off, yes there was yes there was a fan game that used the Unis system. However, um the Unis system is very early 2000s in its design. And some people yeah, might find that a little from the early two thousands. I think I remember saying someone trying to play a game with that system. Yeah, um, it was the it was the system that used the that used the uh, Buffy ver that was used in the Buffy verse and in Army of Darkness. It's not a bad system for the time, but it is kind of crunchy. And no disrespect to C.J. Carella, who it, who is a friend of the show, um, but I think even he would admit it, and he and um. Like that that was kind of, that was kind of how you did how you did things in late nineties, early two thousands, especially in a post World of Darkness um era. But um when it comes to the power which the big the big problem with using that one is that its full title is Fate the Nasuverse RPG. And it was made right around the Right around the time that Fate was just an offshoot of the Nasuverse created through things like Tsukihime and Kiara no Kyokai. 
And when dealing with those particular works, it's fine. But once you start introducing the um, stuff that's in Fate, it kind of shows cracks. So, throwing, throwing that one out the window... Um, the system that I would, pr the system that I would probably use instead would most likely be, um, Scion. I, I think, I think, I think the Scion Trilogy's first edition could work pretty well, especially considering the three tiers that Scion goes with. And just, ha right. and just have, um, Masters be, re be, um, regular, be regular, um, Hum be regular World of Darkness humans, but the servants being akin to um, characters from Scion. So, how would you deal with reality marbles then? Um, <laughs> oh God, reality marbles! I, hey, they have to be mentioned. They are an integral part of the Fate Verse at this point. They, yeah, they are. And they break the rules of the Fate Verse. That's they're specifically they're specifically called reality marbles because they're an alternate reality generated by a person. <laughs> that mm -hmm. is the, that is the kind of thing that um that I would that I would apply on a case by case basis instead of putting in a ru I don't I don't particularly like the idea of putting in a rule set spe specifically for creation of reality marbles. I would ra I would rather have I would rather have that be akin to a, le a akin to a last resort of a servant that can use that kind of thing. Mm, yeah, because in the, in the anime, they are treated as a last resort. Well, uh, that and so are the whole, the actual Holy Phantasms ultimate forms. Yeah, the, the, the Noble Phantasms, yeah. yeah. That's, why, no that's, why whenever, that's why whenever Saber fights, she has Excalibur be invisible and, until well, she uses it. Yeah, because nobody that way nobody can uh, know the name of her her noble phantasm, but it's also mostly invisible most of the time because you know Sh uh, Shiro has really shitty mana. Mm -hmm. He does anyway. Um, but the now as far now, no, Scion the, makes sense. Yeah, did the we, reason the both? reason why I'd be hesitant. Of, no, I, I don't know. No. Uh, not again. I think. Hang on. It's way bigger than the rest of the Nasuverse is at this point. It's its own thing. Mm -hmm. I think he's back. Yep. Too many people just like turning ma historical uh, male uh, rulers into female waifus. That's all it was. Um, <sighs> although, true, the part of the reason I'd go with Scion with this is because um, once upon a time I did that. When I was running a Holy Grail War uh, campaign, um, hmm. and one of the and one of the um, and well, I was I wasn't running. I was one of the players, and Damn, the um, and because ah. of the fact that I wanted to go with a bit of a local flavor. First off, the um, the class of servant that I ended up drawing was Ryder. But it nice. wasn't a wife. It wasn't any sort of wife that you're familiar with, because the servant was Paul Bunyan, <laughs> who um. I guarantee you that if you give that over to the Fate, Fate Grand Order people, they will find a way to turn Paul Bunyan into a cute waifu. Which is yeah, which is guaranteed. why I'm not. Which is why I'm not doing it because if you want. If you need, if you want an idea about how I would pl about how I would play, um, how I'd portray Paul Bunyan in this sense, um, are you you guys are probably familiar with the best bro in Fate Zero, right? Oh yes, <laughs> oh yes, Alexander. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that is that is the way that I'd pull that I'd pull, um, because I had de I had described Paul Bunyan in this sense as the ultimate drinking buddy. Um, yeah. With, and as his, and as the master, the only real spell that he that he had was size control for um, obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bunyan, because 
of course, it's, of course, it's a pack. It's a package deal because if you're gonna, if I'm gonna have Paul Bunyan, I gotta have Babe as well. <laughs> yep. I don't know why, but for some reason, I can't help but uh, regret I didn't put Gintama on the list. Oh jeez, oh, God! <laughs> Let's see you drink too much strawberry one. milk. And you have to go to the bathroom at night, but it's cold outside <laughs> your bed. But you make up your mind to go. You run into the bathroom. You open up the toilet and you let loose. You feel like your whole life has led to this moment. But then you realize it isn't the bathroom. You're still in bed. But you can't stop. You won't stop. The feeling of lukewarm wetness spreads like wildfire. That's what I'm talking about. That's the truth of strawberry milk. Don't you get it? (laughs) (laughs) You just had to do it, Doku. (laughs) Well, also the Doraemon theme. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that, with that said, Maddie, you're up. Oh boy, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the shit show. Um, <laughs> well, number one, uh, I decided to go with my favorite anime of all time, and no, it is not the one you're thinking, Xanatrix. You know it already. Yep. Bubblegum tr- Bubble Crisis Tokyo 2040. Uh, uh, okay, good choice. Elevator let, me hear, pitch is, let me hear the pitch. Uh, you are one... You, uh, what kind of elevator pitch? Because you guys are for the same by, by game standards. I'll just describe the anime, at the, mm-hmm. the elevator pitch of the anime, and you guys decide whatever. Uh, basically, f- uh, group of mercena- lady mercenaries, smoking hot, all of them. They don futuristic suits. It's the year 2040. And, well, there was a thing that blew up Tokyo so damn much and it became Mega Tokyo. It's uh, influenced with um, with influences from uh, a lot of 80s movies, specifically uh, oh, fuck, Blade Runner. That's what I was thinking, Blade Runner. But uh, a lot of Blade Runner, uh, Runner reference, uh, references throughout. One of the main characters is called Pris. We'll give, we'll, we'll, we'll give, we'll give, we'll give you that. Um, basically, yeah, it's uh, t- t- a lot of technology, and there's a mystery. They're trying to figure out. Oh, there's some rogue robots going uh, running around. What's causing all this? And it just increases and in, in level to the point where something really big happens down the line. All right. Um- you play one of the four character, four females, suits of armor, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, fortunately, there, fortunately, with something like Bubblegum Crisis, um, there's a lot of ways to take this. Now, first off, let me get the easy part out of the way. There was a Bubblegum Crisis RPG put out a long time ago. A long oh. time ago. Yeah, it was put. It was put <laughs> out by our Talsorian Games when they were still doing the fusion system. Yep. Ah. <laughs> they don't do that any they don't use the fusion system anymore they use their own interlock system because fusion was a collaborative effort between themselves and hero games as a, as a way to kind of mix elements between their interlock and the and the hero system using well hero system and champions mm-hmm. um, now when it comes now the other thing to keep in mind is that Tokyo 2040 is, um, technically speaking, a reboot uh, of the of the original. Um, and a bit of a confession, I do have the original soundtrack to that anime. It's a good soundtrack. I yeah. don't blame you. Now, taking that taking that into taking that into account, there's plenty of material for me to draw from, but. I'm not entirely confident that I would have the player characters be members of the Night Sabers. Um, mm-hmm. um, if anything, I would probably have them be members of the AD Police. Yeah! Which did get its own spinoff anime, I'd say, a few years, I'd say a bit before Tokyo 2040 came out. I can't remember the exact year that yeah. Yeah, one I came out, and Flutter did look that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, I can handle this part actually. The original Bubblegum Crisis came in in the I think in the late eighties, early nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a, it was a production between it was a thing between uh, two production studios. 
There was a big fallout. There was an OVA that uh, that happened to try to wrap things up. And then if my knowledge is correct, 80 police happened in between that and uh, Tokyo 2040. Yeah. 2040 was like a, like a, like a kind of a reboot kind of a thing slash mm-hmm. uh, soft sequel I get sort of thing. Like there yeah. in the anime itself, the TV, uh, the anime itself, they, there's reference of there were other night sabers in the past. So that's the, kind of their way of saying, "Hey, we're acknowledging their past in a sense." I think the better term would be a requel. Yeah. There you go. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's not that it's not that I wouldn't be opposed to the idea of of using the uh, night sabers. It's it's more that I'm going to I'm going to have some I'm going to have some difficulty with um with with you with um. Being that close to being that close to the source materials. Um, now, for the sake of this, to make things a little more challenging for myself, I'm not going to use the Bubblegum Crisis RPG from all those years ago. Instead, there's the fact that um, there is a fan translation of Tokyo Nova that I have access to. Ooh, that I would be that would I I would be more likely to use, especially since I think that is going to have better rules for vehicles and. Well, there's no shortage of sweet rides in the Bubblegum Crisis universe, so the idea of doing vehicular combat is something I'd I'd um, have to do anyways. That said, I do th- even though the dub is horrible because it's an anime ego dub, I do think more people should look at the original Bubblegum Crisis for historical purposes because that Roger, was Roger, yeah. it's all in there. Mm-hmm. Because that was because um, the original one, that was one. Of, that was one of the first independent dubs. To be honest, if if people wanted to try and get a better a better dub than Anime Ego, uh, uh, they could try for the Mad Men Entertainment dub. That'd be and, the one I would yeah. go for as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, I just bring I just bring up the I just like bringing up anime ego dubs because I keep hearing people bitch about how about how bad dubs are, and I'm like, you guys have no idea how good you have it. <laughs> yeah, they, they've never, <laughs> right? They, they, they've they've oh. all forgotten how bad dubs and for for four kids were too. Um, Low show, budget. Show of hands here. Who here? Who here has seen the UK dub of DBZ? What? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, no. Why did you bring that up? Why? Why? To bring up to bring perspective to this whole thing. That's why. Why? Why? You know what? what there's are, a what are there's... what are we still here for? Just to suffer? Yes. There's Stop a reason. Damn it, monk. There's a reason that the one American character in Lucky Star has a retarded voice. It's because they're making fun of how bad English dubs are. Then watch Lucky Star in English dub, and it's even fucking worse. <laughs> um. So that's so that's um that's number one. What do you got for number two for me, Maddie? Number two is an OVA, uh, and we're going to keep it within the OVA because the series is uh, well, read or die. Okay, elevator pitch is simple: James Bond, but with mutants, and the main character, uh, main character's power is well, she calls herself the paper because. Her main weapon is she could do whatever she wants with a piece of paper, or or multiple pieces in some cases. Multiple pieces in some cases. Uh, the whole thing is a, a lot of international intrigue, uh, spy thriller, but with uh, powers. You meet a, a you meet other people along the way with different powers. Uh, one could uh, phase through walls, that kind of stuff. But there's a whole lot of it, it's a it's. I wouldn't call it a spy thriller more more than anything else, but it's uh, it's got a whole it's got a, a sense of British stuff. Okay, there's a couple ones I can go a couple ones I can go with on this. Um, now a now um, a pretty obvious one would be Spycraft 2.0, which given which given given how it handles things, I can integrate some more supernatural elements into that. Um, a there's a there's of course a long history of um of spot of 
spy and espionage themed RPGs going on, go one of even if only one of them had the official James Bond name, but that's not the one that everybody remembers when it comes to spy fiction and RPGs. They're thinking if you bring that up to somebody, they're going to be thinking of Top Secret. Um, now what? Now I'd be a little hesitant to use something like Top Secret um, e because. As I mentioned in my review, the most recent edition of Top Secret was kind of a mess, um, although an interesting one. And the um, and Top Secret SI, the edition before that, was from the was all the way in the late '80s and early '90s. So formatting hasn't exactly held up with age. Um, that be that being said, it's not out yet, but another one that might be worth looking into, even if you're going to have to do some house ruling, is Troubleshooters, which um, is very much inspired by the advent the adventures of Tintin, and that and the, and those sort of boys adventure comics that were really really popular in Eastern Europe. But the last one, and this is the one that I think that I'd go with personally, if I if I had to if I had to pick one specifically, is Knights Black Agents. Now, granted, Knights Black Agents used vampires, but you have a comp you have a mix of vampires and espionage fiction. I could easily house rule that to have some of the stuff within Read or Die, and yeah, the TV series isn't bad, but. <sighs> it's, a pro it's, it's the problem of trying of trying to follow up perfection, or um, as Midnight's Edge calls it, jumping after Vicula. Um, it's because did I cut out again? No, you're good. All right. All right. Just make just making sure, but that that's what I got when it comes when it comes to um, when it comes to read or die, um, and um, you know it's true. If you're gonna if you're gonna give yourself a code name, um, go with something a little bit better than Miss Deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I get the pun, but no, go back and try again. I get it, but I don't want it. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so, with with door number two settled, what do we got behind door number three? Scrapped Princess, another one of my favorites. Uh, you uh, so basically story uh, sixteen year old sixteen uh, a girl about to turn sixteen. Who has been prophesied to bring doom to her people and her planet? Basically, she, it, her uh, older siblings run with her from persecution, all that stuff. The whole bit is there's a whole lot of. Uh, it's uh, set in medieval times before the, the 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 revolution or the Renaissance, in a sense, mm -hmm. but. The deeper you go in there, there's like, oh wait a minute, this is this is the future. This is the past, past, future, future, past stuff. Technology gets involved, and to the point where, oh, how deep does this rabbit hole go? Hmm. Okay. As a as a note, monk, actually, to add to that, just to give it a little bit more. Um... Specific. Yeah, feel free to help me out, boys. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm helping Maddie out here with this one because that's a. That's a little, a little bit of a, big. yeah, the, the, um, part of the, the description in the initial summary on, on Wikipedia is it begins as high fantasy and then quickly mixes into varying degrees of post-apocalyptic and science fiction elements through the application of Clark's third law being any technology, uh, significantly advanced enough is indistinguishable from magic. Clark's law, huh? Well, I've already, I've already got I've already got my pick in, and it's one that two of you should two at least two of you should be familiar with. Numenera. Oh, yeah. of course. Oh, yeah. yes, of course, you're going to bring me the game that I actually want to play with everybody. Thank you. <laughs> also, also, Mike, if you're listening to this, keep it in your pants. 
Yes! The joke continues and he'll never die. The gag shall never die. I told... The, the, the only way that gag dies is, is if Linkara lets go of the whole ancient ninja electric guitar. <laughs> well, that ain't happening anytime soon. Uh uh. <laughs> we're expecting to work with Linkara to do anything to it. Ow. But yeah, that's the one I'm going with if we're if we're going with this whole notion of a fantasy series that unfolds into something more than that. Because with because um and actually I I have to slightly edit that because in, instead of going with Numenera, I think I, I think instead I would go with the Strange. I think would yeah, be a better pick. Yeah, the Strange would probably fit better. And oh, nice. God, I love ADV uh, dubs. I know, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and the, um, the box set is... Uh, I, I don't know who did that one. Now, let me check. Um, yeah, it, it, um, it, doesn't, it, doesn't say, it doesn't say on the box. So yeah, It says uh, Multimedia 2000 Incorporated. It's what it says here. Hmm. Um, now, when it comes to... When it comes... Now... But yeah, when it comes to that, the strange and the and the fact that characters could have multiple focuses within within that particular setup would allow it to work where you, where once the mysteries start unfolding, you can introduce new laws and thus new focuses within it. So, which I'd say would I'd say would work in this case compared to the dimension hopping that you have within the strange and. Anybody who anybody who's still propagating that controversy about the strange and about Numenera can go get fucked. Yeah. Um, I d- I don't pay attention to controversy so much. I don't even know what you're referencing. It was it was this thing that went around for about a week, where um when the, when that came out, the, um, it specifically had to deal with two instances. In Numenera, there was there were some people who were trying. It's a con- to... It's a controversy so not uh. Not uh, so unnecessary that it kicked Mildred from the internet. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'll ask Mildred about it after the show. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm knowing him, I'll still bring it up when he gets. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, sound of it. I'll go. I'll go into. The, I'll go into the skinny um, later. Yeah, um, I was gonna say after after the show, we're good with, yeah. with it after the show. But um, so that's I believe that I believe that um, that's two, three. Yep, that's three. So what do you got next, boys? I'm sorry, I had to work my gimmick. I really did. Tiger Mask W. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I know. yeah, no, you couldn't I resist. Had, I couldn't resist. It was either that or Sailor Moon. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Work my work, work my real gimmick. You know, it's simple. It's time to still be interesting. Okay, go ahead. Pro wrestling mm-hmm. anime. That that's the <laughs> you're doing the mask kicking other people's asses. Now, oh, and in your pro wrestling. Now, um, fortunately, I, th- um, I think in in um hindsight, Maddie, you made the you made the right call here because there's been a Sailor Moon RPG since yeah. the uh, '90s. I mean, and, he also, if he wanted to go for a, for a more recent pro wrestling animal theme, uh, he could have also gone. <laughs> I Kevin know it. Kevin Omichi. Kevin Omichi. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, with something like I'd say, I'd say going with something like Tiger Mask is going to give me a lot more to work with, given how Showa that anime is. God, it's so is Showa. It's so Showa. Um, yeah, Tiger Mask or Tiger Mask W double. Yeah, mm-hmm. it both work. Yeah, both yeah. work. Um, now, for now, um, you remember, Maddie? Do you remember? Do you remember when I had you help me out with um, Wrestling Month about a year ago? Yeah. Well, I'm already. I'm already. I already know that I'm going with one of the with one of the entries that I talked about in that series, specifically um, Wild World Wrestling. 
I was, ah. I was gonna go with squared. I was gonna go with squared circle, but squared circle is a is a little bit too crunchy for what we're going with in this. Um, what I would the way I would probably structure it in the in this particular case is instead instead of instead of inst I would probably do something a little bit. I'd probably use more of Tiger Mask doubles. Um, some of some of its plot points, namely, um, this is this is I can already see the pitch that I'd pro that I'd probably do. The player characters were were some of the, were some of the most loyal were some of the most loyal members to a to an indep to a independent um, independent promotion. Some somewhere in either Japan or the states or wherever I want, wherever I want to put this. I could probably I could probably. Revive my, revive the old the old um GLCW if I wanted to, which was an e -fit, which was an e fit I st I started a long ass time ago. Stood for a Great <laughs> Lakes Championship Wrestling. Nice. Um. The the appro the appro the approach that I'd go with is that this is is that um the this is a. This is a pl this is a place that ha that um you already you already have a big bad in, in something like this with the G with the um GWM the global wrestling monopoly um and I'd probably have it that this that this ter that this territory was bu was bought up by them and they were given um they were they were give they were the player characters were given contracts, but there, but there was a clause put. There was a clause put in that they could still work independence. Um, just that. so you have a so you have double duties. You have you have certain dates that you have to that you have to do G you have to do GWM matches, and you have cer and you have certain dates that you, that you can do indies and try and get people on the indies on your side. Beyond that, your only goal is survive. Pretty much. So, doing something like Tiger Mask wouldn't exactly be as far fetched as somebody might think. Um, now, gr now, granted, I'd be a little, I'd be a little, um, I'd be a little hesitant about introducing characters from New from New Japan as NPCs. Although, it would be, although it would be, it would be, it would be really funny to get to um to have. To have somebody get backstabbed by Jay White. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a, if we did this like a as like a monastery gaming episode. We could mm -hmm. do a whole episode with Toriyana just to fuck around. Yeah, I'd I probably I'd probably ha I'd probably have it that um that he that he he'd get he um screw somebody over in a G in a GWF match and that and then um st and then steal the trophy. Fuck yes! <laughs> because no, remember, he he is the sublime master thief. Oh. Um. Also, also, I do I do love that when he when he did that little video during COVID, he had to go he had to go. Nope, nothing incriminating at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh wait, wait, wait! Well, God damn it, my monitor broke again. Did he blow? No, he didn't low blow. He's playing by the rules. <laughs> um. But yeah, that I can easily see. I can easily see that working out. Um, so what do you what do you got next? All right, door. All right, door number five. Full metal, metal alchemists. Uh, I think general the general plot point is the same for for, for both either that or brotherhood or just just the nuances. Mm -hmm. least, unless I'm wrong. Simple enough. Simple enough. Well, the You're, the ending of of uh, the original two thousand three series is. Completely different. Completely that's different. We're, that's, that's yeah. But we're not yeah. going there. We're starting no. elsewhere. So mm -hmm. yeah, anyway. you're you're starting the same. You're you're a pair of brothers. You 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 try to use alchemy and stuff happened. So basically, you're you're part of a you, you, it, it, basically science magic. They're they're both together, and you can make stuff with your hands with a with a special drawing thing. Mm -hmm. Equivalent exchange and all that stuff. Okay, 
Now, some of you may have seen the video that I did a long that I did a while back, where I adapted Edward Elric into yep. Anima's uh, system. Yep. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, and I actually got a fair amount of shit for that because I made Anima into a uh, war in Doku. No. Um, <laughs> God damn it, Doku! No. No. <laughs> I regret Do nothing. Shout Tucker in his prime. For the, for those trying to keep track in the audio portion of the program, he is typed. I want to take the power to make cute puppers. No, <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. No, Th this needs the correct amount of no for this. Nope, no times no divided by no to the power of oh hell no. <laughs> I regret nothing. Of course you. Will. Of course you regret nothing, Doku. <laughs> You'll regret you're it when I shove my trigger dagger up your ass. <laughs> you're, you're the Thank only you. one here who enjoys the fact that Nina and Alexander are now inseparable. I appreciate good storytelling. Moving on. Back to sanity, or what? Or what amounts to it? Um, uh, I remember, oh, I remember a long time ago, um, Q, Q Lee had suggested using dogs in the vineyard for this. I'm not taking that route. I think, I think dogs in the vineyard focuses too much on the historical fantasy parts of things. So instead, I'm actually going, I'm actually going to use something from a friend of the temple. Um, mm. um. Are any of you guys familiar with Stormforger? Specifically his project, The Ruined Age. I am not. Um, he mm. put in a runic array system in, in his game with that and both his um, sigil system that is just Ugh. intricate enough to <clears throat> be right on the level of transmutation circles. The Ooh. thing that makes it the thing that makes things tricky with adapting something like Full Metal Alchemist is that the proper rules when it comes to um, transmutation circles aren't really established. And I know I know some people will say, but yeah, but yeah, it, that it that it is or something like that. The kind the kind of information that I would need for something like this isn't really there. In the in either the animes or in the manga, like for it to put things in perspective, consider the way Nen works in Hunter Hunter. I have an, I have enough information from the anime and the mangas to understand the different types of applications of Nen because it because it is on some level or another focused on six principles. Not all at the same time, but there are six pillars ar around Nen use. When it comes to alchemy, you do you do it. You have the law of equivalent exchange. You have the rules when it comes to human transmutation and and the and um and the three steps. But beyond that, um, not a whole lot, especially when it comes to the limitations of using it. Like there's been the implication that using it tires you can tire you out, but it doesn't go full it doesn't go full course on that. And and of course there's the fact that um that sir, that there's been plenty of alchemists who you who use transmutation circles repeatedly and don't get worn out. Like say Mustang giving um giving lust a tan. <laughs> <laughs> the best tan of her life, and also the last. Yes. It's like, yes. Oh, you cl you claim to be immortal? Let's put that to the test. I think I think if you if you look at it and, and you look at it from a from a point of view of what is exhibited rather than what is stated, when it comes to uh, people like Mustang or um, even Kimberly when he isn't using a philosopher's stone. Um, their their abilities tire them out quicker when they're making larger displays. So, like when he was when he, when Mustang was giving Lust the tanning, um, it was all focused on her. He wasn't making huge walls of fire as he sometimes does later on in the series, and so he could just sit there doing it over and over and over. Let's also not forget that he was still 
absolutely just the most pissed he has ever been because of Mace Hughes. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. Mace Hughes, rest in peace. Always. I miss that man. I... But, uh... Do you do you miss him enough to what to watch him get to watch him get completely flattened by his giant picture of his own daughter? Oh yes. god damn. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> um But even but even even with even with that. The reason why I'm going with the rune dage and the rune system is because he went in he went into unfortunately um the sigil project that TG was working on never got finished. So I mm -hmm. couldn't go with that. Oh, damn it. But his approach with runic arrays were it's where um it's not excessively complicated the way the way he has the runes work and his system isn't very complicated because it's just it's just a D100 roll. But you it does require a degree of specificity. To the to the point that um like if you were, if, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with his with the sigil system with the runes, but it's but it's an issue of specific parts. Let me see if I can um, let me let me see if I can dig that part up. Okay, is that in the? Nope, it's not in the cheat sheet. Let me see this rune. Like for for example, the simple version you have to you have to have runes that specifically dictate. The target, size, shape, action, and source. That's pretty specific, and that sounds about as specific as the transmutation circles yeah. and in the uh, list. For example, one one of the um, one of the now so, now source can also be can also be described as um, trigger. Now one ex, one example that's given is. Um, is sculptor which is described as an offensive array where it's where um you you'd apply this array onto a bullet and as soon as that bullet enters a human it turns a large part of that victim into stone not in the, and um now this the size is the size is uses the ma it goes like this size massive shape dome action transmute Target stone trigger human. So with with that kind of setup, do you see do you see why I'd probably use this um, particular system, especially since when I was trying to do a deep dive when I was when I was doing the um, Ed video, I saw a lot of parallels between transmutation circles and rune magic, which is sense, pretty yeah, pretty true in the sense that. The way with the way that it works, if you if you um if you set if a transmutation circle is going to do one specific thing and nothing else. For instance, the um the flame transmutation circle that Mustang has, it is designed to create explosions. It is. It is not designed to to say I cast fireball. It's designed to make some, to make an explosion be created in a certain area. Um, actually, uh, the reason he is useless in rain and water is because he has to have a source spark. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why his gloves are spark gloves. Yeah, he's. Uh, it's used to amplify the fire rather than create an explosion. Um, Kimbley's Kimbley's transmutation circles create explosions. Yeah. Like actual explosions. Yeah, it's been it's been a while, but you get but I think you get the point that I'm making. It's not like it's not like when it comes to Kimberly's explosions, he can make anything he can um, modify that to make something else. That's yes, it's it you're very you're that's exactly tr uh, true. The the transmutation circles of just about any of the uh, state alchemists are are one specific function. I mean Armstrongs are meant to create and, and uh, manipulate Earth to look like him because he thinks that that's art. I'll give. I'm pretty. I'm, well, given who, given who, given who is, given who his sister is, I'm pretty sure he'd rather. I'm pretty sure he'd rather make that kind of art than deal with her. 
Uh, the frozen general of the north. Um, uh, yeah. Now, yeah. now, of course, there's the there's the whole incomplete trick that we that we'd always see Scar using. But, e but even with even with that, um, I think ta I think taking this particular approach is is go is going to is going to be the is going to be the most vi is going to be the most viable. Um, now, as far as how I do it, um, I might set some people off with this, but I'd actually set it during the Ishval War. Ooh. We'd the approach that, the approach because I'd actually done this a long time ago. The approach that I ended up going with was effect was effectively a um a, a advanced scout unit. The thing is, the scout unit I had, because of the, and I will admit a bit of inspiration from Valkyria Chronicles three because the scout unit was just called the the was just called the numbers. They are effectively a penal colony, a, pen a, a penal military unit. The approach is: if you do this mission, which e which even which even our own special forces isn't touching, then you'll get a full pardon. You'll be and you'll be able to be a citizen again. If you fail the mission, well, you'll probably either end up dead or captured. And if you end up captured, we're going to pretend you don't exist because, as far as we're concerned, you don't. So Service basically, win in your end, lose, you're fucked. Service guarantees citizenship. Yeah, it's just it's just that this is service with a very very high death rate. And Starship Trooper service isn't. <laughs> um, wow. We're talking. We're talking. I we're talking IG level death rate. I would say that that was about the same in the Starship Troopers book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Doku, it's probably for the best that you didn't, because if you said um, eighth MS team, I probably I probably would have gone with um, with GGG or Battle Century G, which are more or less the same game, but you get the point. Um, Either way, I like the concept of uh, mechs having to fight in jungle conditions. <laughs> yeah, and this kid, um. The approach that I'd probably have is that the, is for this particular thing is that there is there may be one or two people there may be one or two people uh -oh. who uh, oh no did we lose uh, him yeah he's gone again also without saying too much I kind of realize I need to make a change Hang on a second. Yep. Oh, guys, guys, hold oh. on. I think he's back. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that would be a good a good setup for for FMA. The reason why I go with the it with the uh, with something like the Ishfall War is simply because of the fact that we've got we've got an idea about what went down, but um, there's still I feel like there's still a lot of untapped um, territory with that, especially when you consider that it's not it's not like it was just one localized area that um a, that a few of the cast just happened to be in. When it came to the, when it came to that particular war, yeah, I can see that. Um. Also, I um. Well, one of well, one of my favorite battlefields is um ba is the first bad company, you know, the one that didn't take itself serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So so there's potential there. Um. As far as and it's also it's also a way for me to work my way around minimizing everyone wanting to be a state alchemist. Because 
as far as uh, as far as I'm concerned with this, everybody was part of the Amestris military, but for one reason or another, they got thrown in jail. Actually, no. You should want to play as the florist. The florist is one that makes all the damn money. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Um, so got what, more, more, got more uh, mileage out of that last one for sure. Yep. So I think that's all five from you, isn't it? Yep. That is all it. Right. Yep. All right, shades, you're up. All right, time for the anime guy to do his thing. Now, a couple of notes. One, actually, well, three notes. One, I just had to change one out because I realized one of the ones I had picked really didn't lend itself to going outside of the boundaries of the main story, so it'd have just literally been replaying the story. Mm-hmm. That's kind of defeats the purpose two my goal with my list was to create five uh five different game mechanics though i think changing this list might have kind of screwed that up this last minute change kind of throws that off but third i don't know what trpgs as well as you guys do so you might have to back me up on some of this stuff but i think i've got enough to make some good pitches so let's right. get going first up bna brand new animal Oh, yes. <laughs> Any more awards to my good friend, Matt Burkett? Let me pitch it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you uh, for those who have never seen the series, it's basically about beast men living, uh, living in their own separate, their own individual, their own, like, main city and to escape humans who basically have persecuted the hell out of them. So, we could go one of two, you can pick one of two routes with this. You can be a you can just be a one race beast man living in the city and or you can do what the anime did and have it be a a former human turned beast man and have the transforming abilities of those kind of characters we can you know, set up a storyline where they somehow got injected with a reagent spoilers uh, uh, <laughs> minor spoiler there yeah. but the idea is is that you will be working alongside the uh, Silver Wolf, Shiro, and or the police or the city to basically investigate mysterious goings-on of some kind, using your abilities, uh, regardless of what you choose, to help out in the case. And that lends itself to a lot of different classes you can pick from. Each class can have different abilities, or each race you cho- has their own special abilities and stats. Lends itself to a lot of potential there. Okay. Um... Now, take, taking that in, taking that into account, and I'm going I'm going to get the obvious out of the way. No, I'm not picking werewolf. Ah, that one's a little. That one was tempting, but it's a little too closely related to its own setting to really work in this case. Um, especially since then I'd have to answer the uh, Gaia question when it comes when it comes to adapting it, and I don't feel like answering that question. That question sucks. Which is why I don't feel like answering it. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, and actually, before you go any further, because I want to throw in another mechanic that might actually be interesting. One of the big aspects of this of the end of the series is the fact it's discovered that if beastmen get a little too pit, a little too stressed out, they transform into monsters. It's called nervous cell syndrome. There is a gameplay mechanic right there, managing your stress. Mm-hmm. Now it's even closer to werewolf. <laughs> Okay, now man, now having a stress me- having a stress mechanic is um is def- is definitely definitely something I can um I can work with, um. But taking that taking that into account, I would say I would say that the the um. Like our, I remember considering being a smart ass and saying and saying golden sky stories, but <laughs> no. Um, uh. Now it's not. It's um. I'd say I'd say one. That, I'd say um. Oddly, oddly enough, one that one that I'm one that I'm considering doing, even though this might this one might be a bit too um. British, like I, I was, con- I was considering, I was considering using um, the never, the Neverwhere RPG that um Gr- that Graham had made. Um, that's one possibility, although I would have to stretch some things. Um, 
the the one that the one that I think would be a, would be a little more interesting, and plus I and plus I I want to give this particular RPG some love, is Fireborn. Mm. Now I wouldn't be do I would obviously I wouldn't do the whole dual era gimmick that it has, but Fireborn does have it where you do have two character sheets. So if so, so if somebody wants to do the whole sh the whole shifting thing, they could. Um, do it. I just have it that the second character sheet, which originally would just, would be the dragon, um, wouldn't be as powerful. It still, it would still be powerful, but not as much. The other thing that I'd probably do is is um have it that at any that certain situation. As far as the whole stress thing, I would apply that very situationally, but it wouldn't be too far removed from willpower checks. Um. I'm just not going to do some version of the Great Curse in Exalted or anything like that. Um, yeah, especially since some um, Fireborn has an interesting setup where you're shifting instead of having static, um, uh, instead of having static um, ability scores, you're shifting it between four elements. You've got you've got sets of dice that you're allocating between fire, water, earth, and air, and um, get and getting hurt or getting stressed causes you causes you to have less die to shift. So I'd say I'd say that's a um. Yep, Melger, I'm being someone somewhere else. So so yeah, I've got to call it. All so right. all yes. right, I'll see. All right, I'll see you next time. Good thing I got the night off, huh? The night off tomorrow, huh? Um. So that so I think that's I think that settles door number one. What do you got for door number two for me, man? Well, it's funny we were talking about Gundam earlier because I do have a Gundam series lined up. However, not just any Gundam series. The most predictable one. <laughs> yeah. Because this hand of mine glows with an awesome power. Oh, yeah. She got them, baby. Okay. Now, now, before you get started, I'm gonna say I I I got a, I got a pitch for this one. Mm -hmm. I got an interesting pitch. See, we're not gonna take the, We're not gonna have this take place in the Gundam fight we follow in the anime. That's too. That's too easy. No, 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 no. We're gonna do this in either a future or a past Gundam fight. Probably a future one, so we don't have to involve Master Asia in any way. I mean, if you, go back enough, if you go back enough Gundam fights, Master Asia isn't even born yet. So that's true. That's true. Yeah, you, you could. Yeah, past or future Gundam fight. You basically pick your country, and of course, you get whatever respective Gundam comes with it. That determines what your abilities and your stats are. And of course, you can probably tweak it a little bit, customize it a little bit here and there, but basically you have to stick to a specific theme for whatever country you're working with. Mm -hmm. And then basically you just proceed to go through the Gundam fight in a normal tournament style. Or if you want to be fun, you can throw in some kind of mystery very much like the Dark Gundam, but with something different. I, um... I can think, I can think of a, I can think of a few, I can think of a few things that I'd go with with this. Now, um... First off, let's get the obvious out of the way. I'm not using Mekton for this. Mekton Zeta is so good, though. It's good, but it'd also be too easy to pick for this for this thing, and you guys wanted to challenge me, so it would behoove me to um, follow suit. Yeah. <laughs> now, with the, now with that in with that in mind, there are there are a few that I can think of that I could that I could use. Um, instead. Now, I would, I had, th I had thought about using, um, I, th I thought about using, gu um, Gunframe, but I decided, n I decided not to, simply because it just, it wouldn't, qu it wouldn't quite fit, it wouldn't quite fit. That one would, Gunframe, I think, would be, would be more apropos to, Traditional Gundam or Macross, rather than what we've got here. I would, I would, I mentioned it earlier, and I think, I think this, I think this one would work here. I would prop, 
I would probably go. I would probably go with. Um, I'd prob. This is be. This would be the case where I would use Battle Century G. Okay. Um. Because I do. I do think with how over the top G Gundam can get, I. C that this is one where I could where I could see it being used, especially given some especially given some of um, Battle Century G's mechanics. The only rule that I'd have is that I would have to integrate some elements from Battle Century Z. Sim simply because simply because of the way the um, mechs work. Um, because of now, the, the the trace system, yeah, the mobile trace system. Yeah. Now. Take now taking that taking that into account, because incidentally, one of the first time when it was known as GGG, I did use it once for a Zone of the Enders campaign because I love Zone of the Enders. Zone of the Enders is so good. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I know I know about the whole cockpit jokes. I've made that joke a bunch of times. Don't do it again. Everybody <laughs> has, I'm sure. Yeah, who that's, has? That's, it? that's a that's a known. That's a known problem with a uh, with with orbital frames, dude. That their cockpit is literal. Um, but even but even with even with that, um, the main reason that I'm, the main reason why I'm going with with um battle sent with battle century G along with its um Z expansion is. To is to allow for a bit to allow for a significant amount more um, freedom. Now, when it especially especially since it would make it would make switching between mechs easier in ca in case somebody wants to do what Domon did in in the original series. Now, going from going from having having one Gundam that th that's there and then one that's the secret weapon for when for when the actual tournament starts but i do the the approach that i would the approach that i would probably go with is ha, is having it have is in, instead of having a mystery like the dark gundam i would i would probably have a i would probably have a case of not not word not word for word, but some sort of organization that that wants to influence how the fights go and se and sends out assassins to do that. So something like the, how the Tibetans did it in a uh, in G Gundam, they sent uh, Kirill to go kill people during the final fights so that they could win. Yeah, yeah. the th the thing is, is that the, is I'd pro is I would. You'd prob there would probably be rumors of, of watching out for what's referred to as Gundam Hunters. Ooh, that sounds like fun. I.e. I. E. um people who who um for one, don't for one, don't follow the don't follow all the rules, but two, because of the fact that they're not affiliated with any nation, if a Gundam got destroyed by one of them, it'd be listed as just a DNF. Or didn't, or did not finish. For those who don't watch enough Formula One, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that all be in black. I'd probably, I'd probably have it that, um, that they, they're not as w Gundam hunters would not be as well put together, but that doesn't mean they wouldn't be any less dangerous because of the fact that the people who are probably piloting them have been mercenaries who've been doing this for a while. And are also probably certifiably insane. Yeah, because you know how Zana, you've seen you've seen Zone of the Enders, so you know you know how there was the question about whether or not Metatron is a living thing or not. Yep. I'm think I'm thinking that when it comes to overuse of mobile trace or even just uses of um unlicensed versions of that, there might have been some feedback or even a bit of phantom limb um problems oh so if you don't, you don't have a a specific build version of the mobile trace system you're likely to drive yourself insane thinking that you literally are gundam okay setsuna okay setsuna. 
Um, <laughs> I'm not going that far. The the approach that I was going with is is um, Rorschach, where he where he thinks that the mask is his real face. Again, hello, Setsuna F. Seye. He thinks that the Gundam is his real self. Oh, well, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding here. He he literally says, I am Gundam. How many times in Gundam Double O? Although, um, I was... You have no idea how tempted I was to use Full Metal President for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's based off of Metal Wolf Chaos. Yeah, it yeah, can tell by the name. Yeah. Um, uh, let I me let me read off the cover of Full Metal President so you can get an idea of what you're dealing with with that. Full Metal President White House Mecha Chaos Manual of Robotic Combat for Use of American Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that game. I have it. On, on my computer for... To the point reason. where, in the preparing the play section, he wrote out that Hail to the Chief is all but mandatory. Jesus. I think that, well, originally, it, well, to be fair, originally the game was known as Take Back of Freedom. <laughs> Gratuitous English... Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's the approach I'd go with. I'd go with G Gundam because just just doing the straight Gundam fight, even disconnected from from uh, the series, that's not that's not crazy enough for me. Now, doing mm -hmm. a Gundam fight while dealing with a conspiracy of mercenary hired assassins, that's interesting. That's why I threw that in there mm -hmm. because I figured you'd want to play around with it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, if I. Look, if I wanted to just role play a story straight, I'd be applying to work at Hyper RPG. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm trying to think of how can I make this work without just relying on going through the motions. Mm -hmm. So, what's what's what do you got next? Oh, you're gonna like this one, my friend. I got a good one for you because we're gonna be rolling the dice and pressing our luck with Kake <sighs> Ah. Uh, uh. Yes, you are a new student at the Hayakawa Academy, and you must gamble your way to the top of the ranks. And in doing so, you must make sure you keep your eyes on our opponents to catch their cheating ways. Okay, then. So we're, de we're dealing with so A little bit else. of luck, a little bit of perception involved on this one. So take, taking this Maybe into account... Even a little account, intuition. Taking this into account... Um, this is this is something that I think would be. He's got to think either. He... <laughs> this is something that I think would be much more acclimated to a little less crunchy of a game and more and more of a story game because we're essentially deal with dealing with games of bluffing. Um, yeah. Now taking that into account, the one thing that I would probably put in the GM section of this is to get creative when it comes to the forms that the gamblings would take. Like, you want to know what's one anime I'd probably recommend people use as a um, reference point for this? Kaiji. I knew I knew you were going to go with Kaiji. I was going to go with Akagi, but that's strictly based around Mahjong, even though you know what I say about Mahjong. <laughs> there are no friends at a Mahjong table. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, th I think you can you can really, in a way, interchange Kakegaru and Kaiji and how they how the games work. Mm -hmm. Now, when it now when it comes when it comes to when it comes to those particular games, there's a, there's a couple approaches that I can think of the the main the main one that the main one that I'm thinking of when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to um, a resolution mechanic is. Possibly using Marvel Saga, specifically due to its um, its more or less playing card for format when it comes when it comes to its um when it comes to its resolution system because it does it doesn't use die it uses cards. Um. Beyond beyond that beyond that, um. 
Another one that I could potentially see being used is um, the Fu is the Fu is one of the games in the uh, Fug system, specifically Alice Vegas. I think would be I think it would work very well for this kind of thing, especially since that is using um, a tarot card approach. Hmm. Now the now the 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 approach that I'd prop the approach that I'd probably do with this with this kind of um, system is is more is more about trying to trying to out trying to um out bit trying to um outwit people. You would the GM of course would be the equivalent of the dealer, but the thing. The thing of it, the thing of it is, is that is that there because of the fact that you're dealing with the um, the standard a standard tarot card deck. There is multiple ways you can um, you can take this, and that's really the key here. That's why I'm not going into the core resolution in this. It's more of you have to you have to survive the games, but each game is going to be different, and I prob you know how with Persona you've got several days of you've got. Um, the daytime where you're doing life sim things, and then the nighttime where you're going into either Mementos or T or Tartarus or um, the Midnight Channel, depending on which game you're playing. Yeah. That's the approach that I take with this. In fact, I ended, I... I ended up suggesting something similar when someone asked me how I'd run something to Ryuki. I'd probably have it that in instead of instead of just letting people freely go back and forth between the mirror world, I had it that. For six days, you're just you just are in your normal life. On the seventh day, you end up getting pulled into mirror world, and you have to survive for twenty four hours. Ooh, yeah, I can see this, and actually, this works out with the whole like cheating thing mechanic, getting to know your opponent a little bit, mm -hmm. so that you can see you can learn how they act, how they play. So that you can find out what their tells and what their cheating systems is, so you can kind of learn to counter it. Yeah, this would now. I do want to make clear this is going to be a tricky game to run because it requires everybody to be on point. Because one of the things that I'd probably have everybody do in advance and not tell me is have them is have them write a set of bullet points about themselves, where you have half of them that are true and half of them that are bullshit. Mm hmm. So, so now we're trying to bullshit the bullshitter. Yeah. So so um when so when so, so when somebody um when 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 somebody does roll enough so that they so that they might be able to learn one of these truths, they instead learn a fault. It's one they learn a truth, but it's not it's not the truth that's actually going to help them, or it's going to be one that they could ease that they could easily use as bait. Mostly because whenever people, I bring this kind of thing up because um, I remember in high school when somebody would ask me for the answers to a test, I would deliberately give them answers I knew were wrong just to see if they would write them in anyways. <laughs> and then when they accu then when they accuse me of cheating, I I could say I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so they end they end up getting busted for cheating by accusing me of cheating. I'm, I'm like. Well, he was it. Was he asking me? Was he asking me the? Was he asking me the answers? Yes, I didn't give him any. <laughs> and since it's and since it's past the um since it's past the statute, I can say that now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do we got next? All right. So originally, I had put down my next life as a villainess, but I kind of realized a problem because. Being able to do that do that would only lead to one of two problems or one of two directions. Either you just follow the main story of the of the actual anime, which is boring, or you just do your own thing, which just turns into a generic fantasy thing. Not really much you can work with there. So instead, I went in a different direction, and thankfully, I just recently got some inspiration. My next choice, Inspector. All right, what do you got for me? You have. All right, so basically, you have been tasked 
You, you could go one of two routes. You can either become a member of the curse uh, of the family who's been cursed with immortality and sees the future. You know, we could make up a story. There's apparently there was a lot of people that got put through that, so you could easily say someone else survived. If you've seen the anime, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Or you could be have been tasked to become a god or goddess of wisdom, and thus begins a series of parent of investigations involving the paranormal. It's actually a very simple setup, very easy to create those kind of scenarios. Uh, you can use any of, the, any of those mechanics, either for uh, foresight by death or just a very vast amount of intelligence and wisdom to solve whatever case comes your way. All right. I, um, I, was, te I was tempted to use... Um... I was tempted to use esoteric esoterrorists for this, but I can't because I've already used an entry from the Gumshoe system in in, th in this broadcast. That was Knights Black Agents. Before um, I forget, there is one other mechanic we should we should in, we should include. The fact is, you get to talk to supernatural spirits yourself, yokai, ghosts, demons, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can include that as part of the storytelling. Um. Or you can use them as part of your crew. So yeah. Now taking th taking that particular aspect into account, um, there's definitely there's definitely a few that I can think of that would um, fit. One of the one of the ones I'm le one of the ones I'm leaning a bit toward, even though this even though this might be. This might be stretching things. Is um, is Kamigakari? That's gonna that's gonna be a bit that's gonna be a bit of a stretch. So so um, I'm not putting that fully in there. Um, the other the other potential ent entry that entry that I could see. Let's see where is that? Is pot is potentially using um, mean streets or crimes people play because for something like this, what I want to emphasize is the supernatural investigation, and I think and I think you can easily integrate supernatural into supernatural elements into the into those approaches. Um, as far. Another one that I could that I could see be, that I could see being that I could see being used even if you're going to have to integrate some of the some of the um fa some of the more fantastical um parts would put let me see where was that? would be um either cr um, kill sh kill shot is def is definitely one, although that's gonna that's gonna be tricky no matter what. Um, but I think I think the I think the main one that I'd pro that I'd probably go that I'd prob that I'd probably go that I'd probably go with would be would be um. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say old school world of darkness, but we'd ar we've already used um, vigil, so that's out. But, and it's it's not that it would be it's not that something like this would be specifically hard to do. It's more of figuring out the right angle to do it. And to that to that particular end. Um, Okay, this this one. Um, I would have to very severely limit what a bit what abilities some what abilities somebody could use. But I'd probably go. I'd probably go with um, casting the runes, even though that's not out yet. Simply because that one I can do with. Um, I can do with spooks without going full Lovecraft. Best this is a lot of the yokai are actually very friendly, mm -hmm. so you really wouldn't want to go for Lovecraftian. Yeah, casting the runes has a lot more in common with go with um, a typical ghost story. Um, 
And of course, the, I, w I was tempted to go with Strange Tales of Songling, but that, th that wouldn't fit. I could make it fit, but it's going to require more work than it's really worth. Because, remember, I've, s I've said multiple times over the years, house ruling should be a spice, not the main dish. Yeah. So Absolutely that, true. And with that in mind, I'd, pro I'd probably, I'd probably have it that the that um that when it comes to the characters, they um they all work, they probably all work at the same sort of agency or, or organization, whichever you prefer. Actually, in this case, they would kind of just be independent because mm -hmm. the two main characters don't work for any group. They just kind of, if anything, they work. They work. They just basically are help are just contacted by the yokai. Hey, there's a uh, shit going down over here. Go deal with it. Um, the main reason why I'd have them have them be affiliated when it comes to the player characters is just to give them a, just to give them a good enough reason to be in the same area instead of being a bunch of independent lone wolves. Because I this is important. I actively discourage lone wolf characters in TRPGs. Mm, fair enough. But we could make the we'll, we'll make the argument that they they create their own organization for this kind of thing. Yeah. Just on on the mindset of hey maybe maybe we'll be a little more effective if we're sharing notes instead inst instead of trying to outdo each other. Because every, everybody has their own everybody has their own parts of the city that they know better than than others, so it's a win win scenario. Yep. So. What what number are you at so far? That's not that's my fourth. All right. So what the do you got for the fifth? Up. So we've covered we covered the Gundam series, which kind of cover what's you know normally would go into space, but G Gundam kind of stays more on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we need to go to the one place not to ruined by corporate capitalism, space. Okay, Tim Curry. <laughs> so for my final pick. Star Blazers, Space Battleship Yamato. Oh boy! Basically, I'm going up to 2199, <laughs> but you can pretty much fit them in anywhere. <laughs> oh, oh boy! Yes, yes, yes. So you get to be a member of the Yamato crew. You can choose to be the main pilot controlling the big ship itself. You could be the captain barking out orders, or you could be one of the many fighter pilots going out in combat and taking out the taking out the bad guys as they come along. So there's a lot of room for teamwork and a lot of room for exploration, traveling to different planets. There's a lot you can do with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me let me get a bit of let me get a bit of obviousness out of out of the way for me. Um, I uh, since given given what you mentioned, I should I should note that once upon a time. And I never, I never went through with this, for better or for worse. But a friend of mine tried to talk me into cosplaying as Captain Harlock, <laughs> which, um, whether or not I'll actually do that remains to be seen. Uh, actually, I, I think that's a different franchise altogether. I don't know. Similar art is not. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. I ended up thinking of that, but um. Well, they look a lot alike. I believe it's from the same creator, so that might yeah. be why they look very similar. There, there's, there's been debate about whether about whether or not. Um, I think there's been debate about whether or not Leiji Matsumoto's um, works all take place in the same universe, and <laughs> Leiji has been kind of coy about it. Like he he hasn't outright said no, but he hasn't said yes either. Yeah. Uh, taking that into account, when it comes to e when it comes to either being on the ground or or something beyond that, um, I think I know some. I think I know one that I could that I could easily I could easily work with. Um, because believe it or not, um, Elite Dangerous has an RPG. Really? Yes. Oh boy, and um, I'd actually be more willing to recommend Elite Dangerous as RPG than I would the video game version because there's a lot of stuff to like with the video game version. But I do agree with Mandalore that it's got a bit of a early access vibe even now. Oof. It's with me. It's not the problem with a quote-unquote early access vibe. 
It's the fact that there are enough cheaters on the game now that the devs kind of just don't care anymore. And so the cheaters are now making the background simulation impossible to balance. Yeah. Uh, that's never fun. Also, I just realized if we're going to be doing space exploration, that also means we have to have ground missions. Well, that's that's why we that's why I went that's why I went with Elite Dangerous because there are because there is a there are there is of course character sheets for the individual character obviously, but there is there is a sheet for small ships, medium ships, large ships, and SRVs, which are which are basically sur which are basically surface rovers. So, I'd say I'd say I'd say this one's got a this one's got us covered, in that regard. Yeah, for the most part. Though there are times where they literally just are on the on their feet, just exploring certain like wreckages and shit like that. Yeah. So, it's def it's definitely some it's definitely something that can be worked with. And um, would it surprise you all if I say that this was that um the Elite Dangerous RPG was published by Modifus? No. Now it was now. I sh and um when it comes now when it comes to when it comes to how I do how I do it well it's pretty it's pretty simple you're you're just a you're just a member of the, of this particular crew and there's already there's already and there's already plenty of rules of just un exploring uncharted ter uncharted territory within the core rules so I um. It's not, it's not like I, it's not like I'd need to do a whole lot of legwork comparatively. Um, when it comes to some of the ships, I might not be I might not be able to use the ones that are in the book because it has to it has to go with its source material. But when you consider all when you consider all the stuff you can do as a job within Elite Dangerous, there's a there's a massive massive sandbox to mess around with with this. Um, and because so if so if we so um if we want to have it that it's not a military that we're not on a military ship we're on a trading ship we can do that if we want to do um some dog fighting crews because we watched way too many world war ii movies as kids we can do that um <laughs> and they had they had put out an entire expansion just on exploration so for all intents, I'd say I'd say the Elite Dangerous RPG would be would oh, be Oh god um, damn it. <laughs> Lost him at the climax. <laughs> Never damn. satisfied. I don't even imagine what's going through his head right now every time this keeps happening. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Back. I'm lighting up. He's lighting up, but we don't hear nothing. Silent rage. Come on. Also, did anyone hear the interspecies reviewer actually got rec uh, rescued out of Funimation's grasp? Yep, that was uh, posted earlier. Up damn time, personally. Okay, I got what I was saying was that um, the uh, el the Elite Dangerous RPG. I can't. This for is people so, who have this a, is so a, perfect a, at of least a some small grasp of a uh, of Japanese. The Japanese version has some. Okay, there we go. Welcome right. back. Hey. Um and yeah, I did I did hear about the whole thing with interspecies reviewers which which um I do have I I will have to check if they're if they're also dubbing the series as well. 
or if it's just a sub job. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and call sub job. I I doubt they're gonna be able to put together a whole dub, because because but anyway, because it's some I've never even heard of the company that's picking this up. Yeah, me me neither. And if either of us haven't heard about it, that's saying something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Anyway, back on topic. Yeah. So, Ily. So, uh, like I said, when when it comes when it comes to that, um, the Elite Dangerous RPG is the one is the one I'd go with because even though I would have to would have to do some um, bending the rules a little bit, it's too perfect not to. Because, mm. like with some with some of the others, I mean, may, maybe I, maybe I, maybe I could work them, but they would be but they would be a little bit trickier to to use. Um, and I already mentioned Bounty Head Bebop, so that's out. <laughs> um, I was tempted to be a smartass and say Rogue Trader, but no, <laughs> <laughs> that Rogue Trader is gonna have way too much baggage. Doesn't it always? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'd need to take the 40k out of it. Like I said, doesn't it always? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe Solar Echoes, but um, I think that might go a little bit too in the too into the um weirder end of of SF because. From what I remember from from what I remember from Yamato, we don't really, and a lot of Leiji Matsumoto's work, um, you don't see a insane amount of aliens. Like there's some, there's some, but it's not it's not as but aliens aren't as commonplace as they would be in say Trek. I mean the entire uh, the entire conflict in Yamato is against an alien species. What I mean is when it comes to when it comes to crews on in, on ships, you're not seeing the mixed amount of races. Oh yeah, yeah, it's all humans on the Yamato, except mm -hmm. for when it isn't. God damn it, lazy! I like you, <laughs> but you're but some but sometimes I have to wonder if you've been off, if you're off your meds or not. Yeah, meds. Also, meds? um. Following up with the interspecies reviewer stories, I did I did some digging. Critical Ass has been around for a long time. They're actually a uh, an offshoot of Bright Stuff. Oh, but uh, it now makes even more sense why they're the group that's picking this up. Check the council. Okay, let's see let's see what we've got. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense now that list of anime which this company has licensed explains everything yep and then the and then the additional list of you know everything that they're otherwise involved in <laughs> There is a reason that Ishoku reviewers are going to them. Yeah, <laughs> it's too perfectly. Although, oh my God. What, I'm wait, what I'm waiting for is what what I'm waiting for is to see the salt from people who wanted so desperately for this thing to be scrubbed off the internet. <laughs> oh, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. I said it before, Mildred, and I'll say it again for uh, Xantrex and Shades and uh, Maddie. Just wait until Redo of a Healer comes out. Oh God! Oh, God. All right. no, I've read, I've read Redo of a Healer. Don't you even dare say that that's ever going to not create salt. Oh, when oh it I, does, we'll be there to mine it. Out of curiosity, I actually went through and read all the way up until uh, they meet the demon chick. And, <laughs> oh, that! How that's is this getting an anime? Because um, Redo of Healer is hilarious. I, oh, it is. I want to, um, Shades. I do. Have, I do have to ask. Did Hairball ever send you that Progrise key that he made? Uh, not that I know of. About he, 
He made a gag about a about about a um where he, it was basically a rejig of Metal Cluster Hopper as Salt Miner Hopper. No, he never sent me that. Yeah, he sent that to us. I I remember that. <laughs> I'll check. Yeah. Maybe he did. I just didn't see it. And actually, hey Mildred, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, are you are you allowing pick five honorable mentions? Because I just realized I forgot the most perfect thing for this. Um, save it for another show because it's probably not going to be the last time we do this. Gotcha. In that case, I have five picked out already. Oh Jesus! Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doku I and I have been. I feel a been... terrible disturbance in the force. Ah, it's, <laughs> not that, it's not that terrible. It's only Alderon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was only and... Alderon. Now, if it had been Coruscant, that would have been a lot more voices, and then he probably would have been death. Well, actually, Zan, uh, Zadrix, I'll uh, DM you what I was thinking, because it's not that bad. It's just so perfect, and I can't believe I forgot about it up until now. All right. Um, so I, th I, think that c I think that covers all five from Shades' list. Yeah, that's my <laughs> list. All right. God damn it, Toku. So... Tell me that's not perfect. It is, yes. And in fact, that, that's a, that, that would have been good to do, Especially considering who you're doing it to, but um, another time. Yeah. <laughs> so, Xana, Mr. CEO, you're up next. But first, a word from one of our great sponsors. We have yet another, and I do mean yet another uh, testimonial here. Being able to calculate your own escape velocity means that with Zadari spec, it's always space time. From our friend, the friendly Pompadour. <laughs> so, behind door number one, we have El Hazard. This is a world where you started as a normal high school guy or girl, and then you wound the key on the back of a giant wind-up doll and found yourself in another world. Your quest is to get back. And there are three factions for you to uh, interact with. There are the Bug Rom, a bunch of bug people led by a bug woman who looks more human than bug. There are the, uh, well, I'll just call them the Shadow Tribe. They, they look like humans until people with special vision can see that they're not humans. They're great at illusions. And then we have the human empire itself led by two sisters, one of which has to hide her bringing her, uh, her lover into the palace every so often and happens to look a lot like that boy you knew from high school one time. <clears throat> In this world, there's magic. There's, well, sort of magic. And then there's also the inevitable Clark's third law here, an ancient technology that is much like magic. Uh, in fact, that wind-up doll winds up in that world with you as uh, someone trying to kill you. In the end, your entire goal is to recruit the three priestesses and open the eye of God in order to get home. Okay. So given that and the fact that I already mentioned... Um, I already I already mentioned the strange, so I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use that a second time when it comes to the, when it comes to the whole Clark's Law thing. Yeah. Um. But what I what I'm going to go with instead, and this is just skirting the line about being a universal game, but it technically isn't. I'm going with wine or what's old is new. Mm hmm. Because with that with that particular system, and because of how the because of how the three genres it use are have a very plug have a very plug in plug out attitude. Yeah, I can easily in, I can easily integrate it so that it starts out using the mechanics from old, and then starts integrating some of the futuristic mechanics from new, if I so choose. Okay, now as a side note about the technology. Uh, no, none of the current factions in the world know the actual way of running the technology. Think of it as sort of a mechanicus with uh, Earth technology from 10,000 years ago situation. Mm -hmm. um, they are reenacting what works, but they don't know the actual mechanics 
of how it's working. In in that in that particular regard, yeah, I'm I'm still sticking with um, wine because that approach I can still use, especially yeah. given some of the expansions that were in um, Eons Magazine. Yeah, that that allow me to that allow me to kind of dip into that. Oh, um, I do remember. I think Guardians of Order dipped into that particular setting once, but it was one of those ultimate fan guides, so I never bought it. I think. Yeah. Um, I, I'm specific. Also, uh, for for shades specifically, I'm referencing the OVA rather than the Wanderers TV series. Um, because the OVA to me is better because Ifurita is not a retard. I haven't watched anything related to that, so I'm completely out in the, out in the dark on this one. An anime? I know that you don't. Oh my! <laughs> oh, it's, I've heard of Wanderers. I've just never seen it. Um, well, the Wanderers is the TV series El Hazard, the Magnificent World. Oh yeah, the I've I've heard of El Hazard and the Wanderers. I've just never seen them. That's all it is. I've heard of them. I would recommend El Hazard, the Magnificent World. It's a it's still got some of the comedy elements from the Wanderers, but it's got enough of a seriousness to it and an actually pretty good romance subplot that I uh, that I very much appreciate it. It's a good show. Um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say I'd say we're off to a good start with that. Um, and for and for the record, if, if um if there is an official El Hazard El Hazard um RPG from Guardians of Order, I wouldn't have used that because it would have just been the Tristat system, and a poorly aged version of that because prop it's probably using um maybe maybe first or. No, it'd probably be using second edition because first edition didn't get a whole lot of traction. Um. All right. Well, I, I think uh, Wine made it, made a good made a good start there. Mm -hmm. uh, so behind door number two. Oh, uh, as a side note, these are all just basically some of my favorite anime. So you're getting a picking out of out of things I love. Um, door number two, we have Full Metal Panic. In a world where somehow technology is being transferred from somewhere, this black technology has created armed slaves, mechanized units, approximately four or five stories tall. They're 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 smaller than Gundams. They're usually twelve to twelve to fourteen meters rather than the nineteen to twenty. Mm -hmm. Uh, that are now revitalizing and reshaping the face of warfare. You still have your normal platoons of people. You still have, you know, your air superiority with with jets, and you and you have your naval superiority. But infantry is supported by these armed slaves, and the armed slaves go to the elite. You can be a member of a few different factions. You could be part of the terrorists. You could be part of Mithril, a secret organization that, well goes around the world stopping the terrorists using this black technology. Or you could be a part of one of the actual militaries in the world. But there's always that uh, little piece of, uh, of unknown black box somewhere. And then in that we have things like the Lambda Driver, which is, as close as we can see it from the show, it turns emotion into force. Mm-hmm. Um, along along with the along with the fact that this, because I'm I'm familiar with Full Metal Panic, of course. And, I, I'm sure most people are. Well, yep. most people most people with taste in anime, at least. Another man of culture, I see. <laughs> I've seen a little bit of Full Metal Panic. I never got a chance to finish it, honestly, but I enjoyed what I saw. Yeah. So, um, even if you think Fumafu, the spinoff series, is just a spinoff series, no, watch. Full Metal Panic, Fumafu, Second Raid, and Invisible Victory in that order. <laughs> um, I will I will note that there's pl that there's plenty of instances instances with um f with Fumofu that that definitely make that definitely make me laugh. One of th one of them being the um one of them being po one of them po being the most brilliant fan wielder I've ever seen when it comes to when it comes to his excellency. <laughs> 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 And then, of course, there's the Pony Man incident. Mm -hmm. But um, oh, the thing that always the thing that always comes to mind for me is um, 
hostage negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, okay, empty all your weapons. Okay, here's the gun, and the other gun, and the clips, and the grenades, and the rocket launcher, and more grenades, and the shotgun, and more rifles. <laughs> By the end, everybody's just completely horrified as there's this big fucking the shotgun. shotgun. <laughs> the shotgun, and the shotgun. <laughs> There's just a big all, fucking pile of weapons and people are like, where'd you fit that? They all just think that Sosuke is a is a really, really, really big military otaku. <laughs> Except for Konami. She knows the truth. Um, <laughs> and of course, the whole thing of being completely surrounded and managing to scare the shit out of every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> And it and it turns out the and it turns out the kid who was a hostage was just in on the whole thing. Yeah. Um. But hey, but hey, he was technically right. Peaceful solutions are the best solutions. <laughs> Even if his version of a peaceful solution involves threatening to shoot people with an MP5. <laughs> hey, that's peaceful. It's only a threat. He didn't actually shoot anybody yet. But with that kind of thing in mind, obviously we have to go with more gr more grounded usage of um, mecha, and leaning a little bit towards um, mil a little bit towards military sim. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm I'm scratching off Chrome Strike because I've already used that. So I would I would honestly I would honestly say. Um, and this this is one that I would probably I would probably have to house rule the hell out of, but I'd probably use some of the mech work that's in heavy gear as my base. Specifically, using heavy gear's um, silhouette system. Mm -hmm. Mostly because the mechs in that particular series have a similar level of grounding, and even though there is concepts like the lambda driver. Um, that's that's the kind of thing where I'd probably have that through GM um, Fiat or ha or have the met or have it where there are certain advantages you can use with the mental stats. Yeah. Okay. Um, especially since especially since um, the silhouette system was infamous for how lethal it could get, and it's not it's not like there is it's not like um, it's not like there's clean fights when it comes to Full Metal Panic. <laughs> clean. <laughs> You're it's, funny. It's, it's it's urban combat. It's out, well, not always urban, but it's 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 open combat. There's no such thing as clean. Mm-hmm. Um. And as I will, I will note, of course, that there were um, there were a couple there were a couple of mechs that that were in the anime that were um never in the manga. Um, in particular, Shadow. Yeah. Um, and they weren't in the light novel either. Mm -hmm. But there are certain mechs that were shown in Invisible Victory that were in the light novel that I was very happy to see. Yeah. But I'd I'd say I'd say that that particular approach because the the main thing that I the main thing that I would need to deal with especially if I'm use especially if I'm using say um say myth say mithril is mm -hmm. the possibility that. Everybody's going to be using an M series, Pro probably yeah. an M probably an M nine. Well, the M nines are pretty standard mm -hmm. for Mithril agents. Yeah, but I'd need to find a way to make the, to make the armaments to make the armaments still feel unique. I I can understand that, except when it came to Mithril, the only way that they were unique wasn't uh, the the arm slaves themselves, just their loadouts. Yeah, because they, so they all they all had the have chain guns. I'd need to have an emphasis on the um lo on the loadouts being un being um customizable. Yeah, because I mean, uh, you know, Sergeant Mao had the had the machine guns and the and the larger chain gun and everything. Mm -hmm. Kurtz had the sniper rifle, and of course, uh, after he left his M9 and got the arbalest, um, Sosuke had a shotgun. Um, he loves that thing. Although, when, although, um, 
I, although when it comes to somebody like Sosuke, I don't see... I, I've never saw him as somebody who has a preferred combat style, but more of, I will use ev anything and everything I can get away with. Oh, yeah. No, that's Sosuke. It, it, whatever, whatever's most uh, tactically effective. Mm. Even if it doesn't make any sense, like tr like trying to trying to win a fight in, in, in nothing but a savage without legs. Yep. But and he then, still did it. But the thing that I'll always find funny about 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 him and Kur, about him and Kurz is the fact that when the when during the recruiting process, Kurz quote unquote couldn't hold a rifle, and Sosuke's test scores were quote unquote average. <laughs> and it turns out both of them were just faking it. Yep. Um. Is it? Is it? Guessing is a case of they they work better together than 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 apart, even if it, even if some of Kurz's antics can get a little exasperating. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mal likes him for it anyway. Yep. Um. And Doku, I see I see what you posted in the council. Save that for later. In fact, I'm actually going to eat that comment, just so, <laughs> just so you don't have an excuse. <laughs> Damn. So, and no, that's not on my list for the record for the next time we do this. So what, Zana, what do you got next for me? Door number three. All right. We have drifters in this, these famous historical people, people such as Oda Nobunaga, Toyahisa Shimazu, uh, the, the famous archer Yoichi, that's no Yoichi, just to name three, are at their time of dying pulled into a hallway between worlds and employed by a mysterious man to go help a new fantasy world their opponents the ends are other humans pulled at the times of their death and employed by a mystery woman to end humanity in this and all demi humans as well in this new world and it is ultimately about the uh, the conflict between the drifters who are only there with their wits their knowledge and their skills from the time of their life against the ends who for some reason unknown to anyone currently consuming drifters um have been given supernatural abilities for example joan of arc can set people on fire it kind of makes sense <laughs> um but the, the the people on the ends also have a deep seated grudge against how they were treated by humanity in some way, shape, or form. And the drifters, uh, while not all of them are seen as anti heroes or villains, most of them were seen as not good people. Uh, for example, we have a a famous uh, kamikaze pilot. We have a an imperial Japanese uh, navy admiral. We have Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. We have uh, Scipio and <laughs> it, 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 Scipio Africanus and, and just Hannibal Barca. Everybody keeps going. Um, these these specific uh, historical figures. There is a third faction called the Octoberists, or just the Ten Monthers, if you go with the Japanese, the people of the Ten Month. Um, led by a very, very old Japanese mystic, Abe no Seme, um, who keep eyes on both because they want to defeat the ends, but they don't necessarily want to follow the drifters themselves. Uh, I believe that as a, as a game, you could you could pull in anyone from history this way, or you could be one of the demi-human races that is there, uh, that the drifters are assisting or not assisting, depending on where you are in the world. As for the villains, they're all very high class, uh, high class boss monsters of their own right. But they're leading an army of monstrous races, orcs, kobolds, etc., and also enslaving dragons. Okay. Now, take taking taking into account that. Well, first off. Kota Hirano was involved in this particular series, if I recall. He is the writer, yes. Also, um, can I can I point out how how earwormy the opening theme for Drifters is? 
na 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 there you go um given the given the given the fact that we have I was trying to avoid using anything uni- using a um universalist style games but for this one given all of given all the stuff that gets that gets pulled that gets pulled into this world from the people that have died and the and the technology that they're that they're accustomed to going all, from all the way from um Toyohisa Toya using the weapons of his era to uh, to um to a, as you mentioned before a kamikaze pilot and everything in between <laughs> like i have seen some people say say i've seen some people try and compare drifters to fate i'm i'm not entirely sure that's fair well they aren't they aren't heroic spirits being summoned back from after you know their time in mm-hmm. in life and being made myth they're summoned to an entirely different world upon, you know, basically at the time they would have died. I mean, Nobunaga was pulled in when, when he, when Honno Temple was falling around his ears and on flames. Mm-hmm. And uh, Toyohiso was pulled in as he was, after he had been impaled by spears and ne- was nearly dead. So this is not a, uh, this is not a place that people go to easily. Now, with the, now with that in with that particular thing in mind, and given all given all that's given all that's pulled in. Now, this is technically a Savage Worlds game, but I'm going with Suzerain. Okay. Because I think with I think with that one and all this and all the universes that that can pull from, I've got the most freedom that I'd need. Because when you're considering that you're talking about pulling. Um, historical historical figures into a, into a more fantastical world. This is gonna something like Suzerain would allow me to cast the widest net possible. Because I want because I want to posit one other, one other thing when it comes to when it comes to some when it comes to a concept like drifters. What's sto- what's stopping what's stopping my take pull to from pulling just characters from Earth. Understandable. I think I think uh, the reason Hirano stays with characters from Earth is because he wants to he wants to integrate stuff from history into his fantasy world. Yeah, but, but that's not that... that's not a a, a a fetter we have to follow. Yeah, but I could I could easily I could easily see see um pulling pulling characters and like from uh, from what may. That may as well be historical figures in other worlds to go with this. So, if I if I felt like if I felt like pulling somebody straight out of Lord of the Rings to get thro- to get thrown into this, like I pull in air, like all of a sudden, um, we pull we pull in we we pull in one of Sean Bean's characters, and he and he's alive again. So we can get twenty minutes later. <laughs> yes, pull in Boromir. Hey yeah, Boromir, we... bye Boromir. <laughs> God damn it! Look, you look. You know the rules. If Sean Bean is in a movie, he's going to die. Hard and fast and deadly. Yep. On that note, boys, it's 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 it, yeah. It's late for me. I'm gonna wish you guys a good night. All right, all right man. Stay frosty. Yep. But, all right. So- with pulling from the widest net, I get that. Mm-hmm. But with that, with that, um, with that said, not obviously when obviously when it comes to something like drifters, because of the fact that you're not exactly dealing with, you're certainly de- you're you're not exactly dealing with good people, but cer- but certainly people who um, are shades of gray or shades of less so. In the case of Joan of Arc, who um, I don't sleep with crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the the age old adage: don't stick your dick in crazy. And Joan of Arc definitely fits the bill, at least from Drifters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just a... like how 
at the at the end with a at the end of the fight with a with Toyahisa, he's like, "You're a woman. I'm not even gonna try and kill you now. Go home." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, not the best thing to say, Toyahisa. <laughs> yeah, this is. I I think I think Drifters gets more flack than it deserves. I honest I honestly do. And I think only, I think that people looking at it and comparing it to fate is um doing it a disservice. It is. It's entirely different. Um I, I also I also have to say that the only flack I give Drifters is the flack that it does deserve, and that is why is there no season two yet? <laughs> <laughs> and it's because there's not enough base material. Hirano has been kind of stuck behind a writer's block, and that makes me sad. Oh, we're dealing with this shit again? He, he, he's he got a lot of the manga out, but the first season covered basically half of what he had written and published already. So, so it's more of waiting for waiting for him to get out more material, and which um might be might be a blessing in disguise because how how many how many how many times have we had to deal with filler arcs when a manga was when a when in an anime when the manga was still in production? Um. Well, with Hirano's one own works one. We have Helsing TV versus Helsing Ultimate OVA. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking in general when it comes to anime. We've seen that kind of thing so okay. many times. Don't even. <laughs> no, no, no more. No more. I don't need to think about the Bleach filler arcs. No more! I wasn't going with that. I was going to go with all the Naruto filler arcs. They're more palatable than the Bleach filler arcs. Mm. The Bleach filler arcs are nightmare fuel. And I'm, I don't mean nightmare fuel in a good way. Not ones that actually want you want to creep you out. They just make you sad and feel like the world is dying. Well, to be fair, if I wanted to feel sad, I just watched Kino's Journey again. Oh. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I needed that. Thanks. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I like Kino's Journey, but watching that is fucking depressing. Talk about mood whiplash. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but when it comes... So what do we what do you got next for me? I believe this is going to be your fourth pick. number four. Uh, number four, possibly my favorite in the mecha genre ever. We have ga 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 because this show is the best of the Brave series, the second Brave series that Nobuyuki Hiyama himself got to star in, and also cemented him as the king of Braves and king of screams. Yes. Uh, uh, no, you don't. You don't understand. Hiyama is like my favorite male seiyuu. Um, well, it starts out giant combiner robot with a mystic lion from outer space and a cyborg guy who uh, only became a cyborg because he got hit while he was an astronaut. Uh, starts out monster of the weakish. You've got these alien life forms that combine with technology to create giant robots that are actually alien life forms that combine with humans and eat their stress to turn them into monsters. But it be- quickly becomes something a lot more involved and less monster of the weekly until eventually we are in space fighting something the size of Jupiter. And then, of course, you go on to the OVA. Uh, Grand Glorious Gathering, where we go all the way back to the origins of Gal Gygar in uh, the trinary solar system, I guess, as they call it, mm-hmm. um, where we get the Genesheek, where the original machines that were supposed to combine with the, the Space Mecha Lion are found and eventually reprogrammed to fight what is essentially a rogue program, you eating all the dark matter from our universe to rebuild theirs. Okay. <laughs> Since we're going completely batshit nuts in this case. Hey, if, you knew it was going to happen from me. You just knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen from somebody. I just needed to. Uh, it was just a matter of who was going to be the one pulling the trigger. <laughs> we're not done. The trigger's only half cocked. I've got another more down earth uh, entry in my, in my fifth and final entry that is still batshit off the wall. Okay. Taking uh, taking that into account, this is the entry that... Now, the only reason I'm using this particular entry is because what I would have used, I already did in the case of um, GGG. Yep. So I can't well, yeah, I heard, use that twice. 
Yep. When I when I heard you say that for someone else's entry, I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna make him fight for it now. So, taking that taking that into account, the the one I'm going to be using the one I'm going to be using instead is Gunframe. Okay. Okay. Um. And when it com- when it comes to this particular thing, um, as tempting as it would be to have to have to have them be part of the um, normal GGG, I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna have it in the branch on a different part of the planet. Makes perfect sense. All the branches um, are doing different stuff. Which oh, which also which also means that um. I prob I probably have I probably have this kind of thing set in between um in between the original series and final, where th- yeah. where there's a bit more understanding of the technology. Which also the thing that this also means is that there is the possibility of of secondary mechs on other parts of the planet. But here's the problem: the t- the um the technology in order to do it. Does re- it does require the, it does require those kind of stones, but um, you need in order to, in order to utilize the in order to utilize the mechs to their full potential, you're going to need surgery. So everybody and, has to be a G stone cyborg of some sort. I'm think I'm think I'm thinking either a G or a G, or a um G, or a J stone because well, J, J- because J- well so. Well, sold that sold that Jay can't fight an entire war by himself. Yeah, but um, in between uh, the end of of three G and then of fi- uh, into final, um, Soldato J and the JR have all disappeared. They're mm-hmm. considered dead because of the uh, yes. explosion at the heart of the Zet Master. Yeah. Um, now, take, taking that into account, it pro- it probably would be a case of I'm not I'm. It, because that with that there would be enough time where where someone could feasibly make attempts to replicate the effects of the G stone. Sim- simply I because see that. there's simply because there's been so much re- so much research with um guys, um cyborg body even if he even if um by that point he's permanently fused with his own and is and isn't even a cyborg anymore. Yeah, an evoluter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you could take elements from the the Bayonet mo- uh, novels and from both the the uh, novel version that follows uh, Renee specifically, Queen of Lions. Yeah. Um, we also have evidence. I don't know if you've been following anything Gaugaigar at all recently, but uh, there's evidence in the new. Um, <clears throat> I guess it's called the Lord of Ruin series, mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, it happens after Final. Uh, from 3G being built up from Akamatsu Heavy Industries because they uh, fully confirmed in Grand Glorious Gathering that Better Man and 3G take place in the same universe. <laughs> and um, it looks like they've actually started creating power... Uh, like like the GS ride where the G stone is is the centralized version, but it's doesn't require a G stone. I think mm-hmm. They called it a G, a G generator, kind of like a Soldato J's J generator, but uh, it doesn't require a GS ride. But that's that's after final. So yeah. Now part of the part of the reason I'd go part of the reason I would go with um with some, with something like Gunframe is because of the fact that it had it would have a much more free um econ- economy of actions. Mm-hmm. Um there but the the main thing that I would probably focus on with something like this is again different different branch. I probably only I'd probably have um one one indiv- I probably have one case of an individual who ha- one or two cases of um, people who have who have taken the cyborg treatment and others who are um pi- are piloting robots the old-fashioned way yeah but are but are used as um su- but are used as support units yeah that makes sense um 
basic basically use this opportunity to kind of to kind of branch out because once somebody gets some new tech, obviously they're gonna want to try they're gonna want to try and make it a little less one note as far as its use. Of course, I mean that's how we got the Cosmo Robos in the first place mm -hmm. in the whole Mike Sounder series. And that's what. Now this now I want to make clear that the reason I'm going with gun frame in this is because my first choice is, hasn't has already been taken, but either of them would work. In fact, some might argue um, Battle Century G might work better, but I've already I've already picked that. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that's gonna, the only thing that's going to be tricky when going with gun grave is um, symmetrical docking. <laughs> symmetrical docking. No. Um, I mean, it's it's certainly not it's certainly not imp it's certainly not impossible to do. It's just going to require some legwork, and the potential that I might need to do multiple character sheets, which I had already predicted for something like that. I'd have to do, but it's one of those it's one of those things where can can't hurt can't hurt to be too prepared. Yeah, and I mean, you'd have to do multiple character sheets for pilot and. And mech anyway, uh, just to begin with, mm -hmm. as is the case with most mech RPGs that have out of mecha uh, uh, parts to them. Yeah. Now, with the let's see, and I think um, I think that's all. I think that's all five from you, isn't it? Nope. The last nope. one. I, there's one more after Galgaigar. Okay. What and do you got? Now, like I said, this is a uh, much less grandiose in scale, but just as batshit. We have Id Invaded. You are a <laughs> member. You are a member of a special police group that uses people who have already murdered once before in their lives to dive into the Id wells of. Mm, serial killers that they're trying to investigate. Uh, when you're in the id well, you forget who you are, and you're given a series of prompts that clues you into being a special, grand, detect, brilliant detective, uh, and that your entire purpose while inside the id well is to solve the mystery of who killed the girl that you see in front of you, Kaidu. Uh, All right. So essentially, essentially you're, you're, you're diving into people's psyches in an attempt to figure out where the bad guy is going to kill next before he kills again. And um, if you die in the well, you wake back up and are sent immediately back in so that you can continue the, the clues. And you, you always have amnesia every time you go back in. So you always start from zero. <laughs> All right. Um, so taking taking all of that into account, did we lose Monk? Or did I, I lose? Oh no, we lost Monk. It invaded is just as batshit as Galgaigar. It's just not as grand in scale. Yeah, I've heard of it. In, I've heard of it, it, it invaded. It's super good. Um, you will cry. I've heard. Also, don't watch the dub. The dub is very underwhelming. It made me eh, sad. If it comes up on our watch party, we kind of have to watch the dub, so there's really not much I can do about that. And I will cry for you at that point, because you will miss uh, a voice actor making his voice crack in the most heartbreaking way possible um, to a guy who just kind of breathes softly instead. Okay. I think I'm back. Yes, um, you are back. Taking what you mentioned into account, I think I, I think I know which one I would work with. Um, and this one might be a bit strange, but when I thought about it more, the more it ended up fitting. And that particular entry is going to be Tech Noir. Okay. Now the reason why I'm go the reason why I'm going with um. I'm going with Tech Noir specifically, is what's known as the transmission mechanic. Um, the idea, the, the idea with with um transmissions is 
that there is that there is a series there's a series of um connections that can that can be drawn between diff between um different NPCs. And for for the example of this, I'm going to use the first transmission that I got out of out of um Technoir, which is the Twin Cities transmission. Now, first off, there's the master table that ha that has there's the master table that has the that has the um, main factors when it comes to the mystery, connections, events, factions, locations, objects, and threats. Mm -hmm. The approach that I am considering having is you ha is um there are, you have now first off the whole you obviously can't have just one person that you're controlling within the idwell because of the nature of RPGs. You're going to need to have several. So taking that into account, the approach that I take is that there are several people, with di each with different perspectives. And ideally, I would probably go... This is one of those things where the more people I have at the table, the better. Because I would have each of them have one part of the table where they know that that particular aspect is involved. And as they meet up, as they meet up with the other characters, they um, they can they can start putting their puzzle pieces together to figure out what's going on. Okay, and uh, that that actually uh, ties into plot elements that happen later in the uh, in the the actual show uh, where they start having multiple um, brilliant detectives in the well at once. Mm hmm. Um. Is the thing. It's one of those, the thing that I always want to avoid whenever I run games is I don't want a case of everybody wants to be the Jedi. Mm. Or um, another example is everybody wants to be the Doctor, i.e. why I never ran a Doctor Who RPG even though I was asked. <laughs> well, the way, to, the way to, to settle that with everybody wants to be the Doctor is you just make the Doctor a GMPC. Um. If I was really pushed to it, I'd probably have it that they're that they're just members of Unit or Torchwood. I think that I think that one's gonna give me a gonna give me um, a better a better um, leeway. But the other the other thing is the other thing with it is that. With each, with each of the uh, tr with each, with each, within the uh, transmission, there's a, there's a set of NPCs called connections, which make which have a set of unconnected and connected leads. Which makes perfect sense because um, since you're diving into someone's id, all of the NPCs you would see inside them are projections from their own mind and would uh, would have relevant information. Yeah. Um, there was another potential one that I could go with is Lucid, especially considering that there's a, there's a significant amount of crossover between something like Id Invaded and, um, Inception. Yeah, there is. And, um, and actually there's a lot, a lot more crossover than you might think. Um, some lore building stuff from the show itself, uh, the reason that all of the um, great detectives come in with amnesia is to uh, keep them from identifying themselves as themselves. They're sent in as avatars with a separate identity and with a prompt that makes them think of that identity rather than their own mm -hmm. so that their ego is not identified while they're in someone else's id, which can cause really bad shit to happen. <laughs> Well, the the other thing I was thinking of is when it comes to the threats part of the uh, transmissions when, within Technoir, threats in this case would be the equivalent of the um e would be the equivalent of the Ed's white blood cells, I'd mm -hmm. say. Like if some if something draws too much attention or is de or is identified as an outsider, that would that would be a means to try and um deal with the problem. That's um. That makes sense. Uh, the the biggest threats that came in the id wells of the murderers was since these were these were uh, wells bi built off of their murderous impulse. You had to actually 
they had to feel like they were going to kill somebody before they could get a scan to let anybody into the wells. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually a reenactment of some portion of themselves that feels like killing people. And so parts of the threats there are things like um, in one of them, there was a sniper killing everybody. In another, there was a, there were bombs going off. In another, there was lightning coming from the heavens and striking and killing people. So yeah. uh, white blood cells of some sort, you could make them, you know, actual just hazards like lightning or an NPC that's specifically there to kill people. Which is definitely something I can go, definitely something I can go with. Um. So with so with that in with that in mind, I think I think there's a um. I think there's a fair a fair amount of spread with all with all these, and if you'll notice, the ones that are actually using ostensibly anime art in this little experiment are in the minority. That's true. A lot of the ones we ended up a lot of the ones we ended up picking don't really qualify as that, um, and I did I did that on purpose to make a point that you don't necessarily need a anime TRPG in order to run a TRPG that's inspired by an anime. It that's just one more medium that you can be inspired by just like anything else is. Yep. Because the art is just that, it's the art. You can transplant that into any book and it still works. Mm -hmm. Um that's also the re You guys you guys know that I don't really care for the term JRPG for and I specifically don't care for the idea that its definition is based on that art style. Mm -hmm. Because, well, then the obvious question, the obvious question I'd have to ask is, so if I if I took a game like if I if I took a game like say the Elder Scrolls and added and just made all the characters look like waifus, does that make it does that make it a JRPG? <laughs> no, no, no that's obviously not. Um, that's definitely not. Obviously not. I'm just I'm just taking the art style argument and turning it on its head. I wouldn't yeah. actually want to want to do that because that's what the modding scene is for. <laughs> yeah, we, all, we already have so many waifu mods that chokes a camel. Oh, mm -hmm. good God, yes. And I don't even use those. Fuck that noise. Mm -hmm. um, I want to play an anime game, I'll play an anime game. Yeah. But the... But... The idea of a TRPG based on an anime, as I mentioned in the BESM review, is in an interesting place, because... 20 years ago, and I was there for a lot of this shit... There was this notion that taking inspiration from anime or video games was deviant behavior. Ugh. Um, yeah, I've, or I've... or at bet or at best it was ghettoized to this to this specific branch that of just anime RPGs as as if that was the whole genre, which um annoyed me because animation is not a genre. No, no, it is not, and. <laughs> While there are certain anime TRPGs around even now, case in point BESM, they're in the minority compared to where they were um, decades ago. Mm. Like when I look when I look at the anime influenced TRPGs now, they're usually trying to emulate something more specific. Yeah, and the ones that have survived, such as uh, Besom, is um is because they're, they're good universal mm -hmm. uh, yeah. particular use. They're useful, and, they're, and they fit more than just a, a niche anymore. Yeah. But with, with that said, I do want to thank you guys for um, participating in this crazy-ass experiment, and I may, I may open this up to, to more folks, because I'm curious, what some, I'm curious what, some of, what some of our good brothers would, um, would reply when it, comes, when it comes to this little experiment. Oh. Um, <laughs> I already know one of one of Doku's later replies that he wants to do, and I was like, "That's perfect." Um, I'm scared. Although, although when it comes to, when it comes to the people outside of the circle who who um, go with this, um, I'm going to be I'm go I'm probably going to be taking a look at their list with a bit more scrutiny. Yeah. Simply, sim simply because, simply because, um. 
Some people might fall into their gimmicks, and other people might put things in that there's no way I can I can touch just to fuck with me. <laughs> I could see plenty of people doing that. <laughs> there's there's a small there. There's a small part of me that think that thinks that one one of these days some tr some troll some troll is going to, is going to is going to um put in an, an anime that would probably get us kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> but what like Berserk? <laughs> no, not doing it. <laughs> Just remember, anyone who says Griffith did nothing wrong deserves to be burned at the stake. Oh please, you're too nice. I was going <laughs> to have him keel hauled. Mm, can we put bamboo can we put bamboo splinters underneath their fingernails first? Too much work. I guess you're right. And to be honest, I'm not that precise. I never said we had to be precise. Just you, you, you put the wedge underneath the fingernail and hit it with all your might. No, just put. You know, at the at the very at the very least, if I have him walk the plank, I can pl I can play Ale Storm in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, that works. Especially since it, I uh, especially since it seems that the. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually the unofficial theme of the monastery is the song Fucked with an Anchor. <laughs> <laughs> you see, at that point, uh, we really are all satisfied, and then they are set free. <laughs> <laughs> um, but with that, with that said, that's going to that's gonna do it for this particular entry in, in Geek Watch. We'll be back next week with some with something different. What it is, who knows? But you'll know eventually. Because there are many things that we have here in Geek Watch. A plan is not one of them. <laughs> and of and of course, I'm still doing RPG a day throughout the throughout this month. Um, and for, and hopefully I don't step on any toes. But next Saturday, I know I'm gonna get myself in trouble for what for what's gonna be coming down the review pike because. I am tackling the Age of Sigmar RPG. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. No, Mildred, don't do it! Don't! Look, two years ago, I said that I, fe I feel like Age of Sigmar will be, b will be better off as an RPG than it is as a miniature war game. And when, the and when the time comes when it eventually gets that treatment, I'll cover it because everybody deserves their day in court. And oh, no. I've kind of softened a little bit on I will pray Sig for you, brother. Sigmar pray after for you. um after watching Avandris's videos. I mean I'm I mean I'm still salty about how it happened, did, but I get the did, feeling Did we really lose him at the close? God fucking damn it. No, I think we did. <laughs> we <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Gonna lose his shit. We lost him at the close. Just let him finish the damn stream already. Bad. Oh man, it's so no. That's a lot of periods. Oh shit. That is a lot of periods. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> no, nope, I got one better. I'll go oh, with my I'll go with my favorite character from Inside Out. Yeah, yeah, I had a feeling. It's almost like everything conspires. <sighs> the point it the point is we'll pro we'll probably have we'll probably have some we'll probably have some there's get there are many things that we have here in the Geek Watch. A plan is not one of them, obviously. Um, as far as the <laughs> Age of Sigmar thing, I'm going to do my best to not bring up 
the end times or the fact that Age of Sigmar is basically their their Games Workshop's excuse to try and make more Space Marines. Space Marines. Uh. Because, because, first off, Soulbound is being made by Cubicle 7, and I trust their work. Okay. Because they did a good job with Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition. They... They did a much better job than Ulysses did with Wrath and Glory, which is why I had which is why I had to call that audible when I reviewed Wrath and Glory because at the time I didn't have the Cubicle Seven book, and then midway through editing that review, that book comes out and like oh, f-. I'm like okay maybe they just did a cleanup. It's like oh fuck, they did a lot more than a cleanup. Well, <laughs> time to call an audible. <laughs> um, and. I know, but I know that there's gonna. I know that um, Age of Sigmar get has gotten a lot of hate. I'd say a little bit less so now, but it's def it's definitely got its fair share of hate. I I argue that um, something like Age of Sigmar is best if it does heavy metal style fantasy. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. You know, the the kind of fantasy that would be either a in possibly the ba the greatest Daffy Duck cartoon of all time. <laughs> i.e. the only thing that the only good thing that came out of that new looney tunes um reboot yeah or b or b um every power metal album cover i've seen in the last 20 years i like b better um what you don't you what what do you have against what do you have against daffy duck being the wizard Nothing against Daffy Duck being the wizard. I just like variety. Fair enough. Doesn't doesn't hurt that, as some of you know, I'm a big fan of um, Luca Torelli's work. Mm hmm. And he, even though he's not doing the fantasy stuff anymore, his his particular musical style just lends itself too too well to that style. Um, plus. I get along way too well with the got with the team behind against the Dark Master, so there's that. But that's what that's what's coming down the that's what's coming down the pike, um, and of course we'll have something interesting next week as we always do. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.